Police Chief David Brown in Dallas. I want to share with you some of the comments from this suspect. The suspect said he was upset about Black Lives Matter. He said he was upset about the recent police shootings. The suspect said he was upset at white people. The suspect stated he wanted to kill white people, especially white officers. The suspect stated he will eventually, that we will eventually find the IEDs. The suspect stated he was not affiliated with any groups. And he stated that he did this alone. The suspect said other things that are part of this investigation so that we can make sure uh, that everyone associated with this tragic event is brought to justice. That is the Dallas police chief. Today is Friday the 8th of July 2016, but guaranteed you can mark as the demarcation point, the point of no return, July 7th, 2016 of when the George Soros, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, globalist, destabilization, race war based civil war program was launched in the United States. There have been dozens of movies the last year pushing racial division and oppression of black people and bringing up every old wound and reopening it and rubbing salt in it. There have been countless TV shows and news programs and press conferences and the president four times that I'm aware of in the last week coming out and giving speeches about the oppression of black people and the harassment of black people in this country, which undoubtedly is going on to some extent. But the point is, metrically, statistically, it's one of the least important issues if you're actually black in this country or any other color. And I'm going to go over the statistics and the numbers. But they are absolutely hyping this going into the hottest months of the summer, July and August, ahead of an election that's four months away. A lot of people, this broadcast today will be deja vu. Because you've heard me hammer the plan that they're orchestrating. You've heard me point out that the big money banks and the Ford Foundation, the Carnegie Foundation, and the Rockefeller Foundation, not just George Soros, are behind funding hundreds of millions of dollars into these groups at universities, high schools, you name it. What you're going to see today is obviously the aftermath of what's happened, but it's going to be a breakdown of what's coming. Now, there's several different future scenarios, and we the people are going to govern what happens. But right now, right now, we are witnessing what George Soros brags, and we're putting reports together showing all this. He did in Tunisia, in Libya, in Egypt, to a failed extent in Syria, in Ukraine in Georgia, and many other areas. You know in Egypt, and you know in Ukraine, and other areas, the overthrow of the governments began as anti-police demonstrations. Because police are the visible form of the government, and what the people run into, and the media plays it up to scapegoat them for the larger government problems. Kind of like blaming TSA for Congress putting them in place. And the globalists can sit up in their palaces while the low-level people get the heat. This is an exact program. Now, we know the enemy program. If people will listen, and if the local governments will listen, we can stop this. I know how to stop this. I told you it was coming. Listen to me. We'll be back. Humans are designed to pick a side. It's our ancient programming. It's our instincts. Cowboys. Versus the 49ers. Coke versus Pepsi. Ford versus Chevy. Black versus white. And the global social engineers have written countless books and white papers admitting that they just manipulate us 
and play us off against each other. Very, very powerful words we're going to play in a few minutes of Ben Carson where he boils it all down in just a few minutes. What exactly is going on here? It's very, very sad. I have the statistics from the FBI and from the states here about just how many people cops are actually killing, period. And when you look at it, you understand it is a total red herring. Now, that isn't about defense of police or bureaucrats or fundraising, revenue generation that's going on. I certainly have a lot of issues, and people know that I am a major government reformer or, or police reformer. I've written books. I've made films. Why, years ago, I was known as Mr. Anti-Police State. But it was my deep study of the issue that brought me to a much more sophisticated, in-depth understanding of not just police in this country, but the entire compendium of the history of police and paramilitaries for that matter. And so today I'm going to try to cover what's happened in Dallas, what this signifies, where we're going, and how we can hopefully stop this. Because let me explain something. I'm 100% on the side of due process and local government and thus the police. And the reason I'm making that bold statement is I want to choose a side openly and say which side I'm on. And I'm gonna elaborate on this in just a moment. Because at a primitive level, we all tend to jump to one side or the other. I choose due process and local government because I know who's behind this destabilization program and I understand where it's designed to lead us. And by legitimately supporting due process and not anarchy, I will then legitimately be able to be involved in reform and trying to make this a better nation and a better world. Now, let's be clear. We're told there's two sides. You're either for the police or you're for Black Lives Matter. I don't choose a side in that because it's a false paradigm. Foreign multinational social engineering programs on record that have been used all over the world to overthrow governments and to destabilize regions are in effect, not just here, but in scores of nations. And we're going to break that down today. So it is multinational globalist manipulating our internal affairs to turn us against each other and start a civil war. So when I say I choose local government and due process, that isn't choosing the police. It's choosing my country and recognizing an outside attempt at divide and conquer. So when you think about the sides to choose, it's George Soros, or it's your local government. It's the New World Order, it's Goldman Sachs, it's J.P. Morgan. Who's financing the anti-police groups? Who's financing the open borders? Who's financing bringing the groups in? Yesterday, Obama announced 15 corporations led by Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan that are actually bringing the foreigners in themselves. That's who's hijacked the country. And whether it's Ukraine or whether it's Egypt or whether it's Georgia. This destabilization program is being carried out and captained by George Soros. He has taken the credit for all three countries and others. And when they overthrow all three of those countries... Do you know how they did it? It started with anti-police groups. And then they either bully the local governments into accepting their leadership over the police. Or they start a civil war and overthrow the elected government and then put their people in. This is an admitted program being run by the State Department and George Soros and Obama. And notice Obama and all these movies and all these TV shows and all this propaganda and Obama coming out in, a, in four different speeches the last week, including one yesterday, saying that the police are after black people and the police are persecuting them and they're killing them and it's a big problem. And then this happens hours later in Dallas and Obama comes out this morning. It's on Infowars.com. We have the clips. And says, quote, here it is, 
From Politico, after latest shooting, Obama says U.S. police must reform. So it's their fault that this former Army soldier, Micah X. Johnson, five facts you need to know, who's told police before he was killed by a robot, that's interesting, that he was angry at white police and white people and wanted to kill them because of the Black Lives Matter movement had angered him. This gentleman and two other people decided because they were mad about a video out of Minnesota where a cop might have shot somebody who was innocent, okay, burn them. And so you just go out and randomly target white people. Pure, mindless, racist tribalism. And then you've got Loretta Lynch and the UN with the Strong Cities Initiative launched this year, six months ago, in February, coming out and saying, we're going to reform the police with the UN with taxpayer-funded offices in every major city to basically take over the police departments and local government so then the police can persecute libertarians, veterans, conservatives for not believing in man-made global warming or exposing Agenda 21. That's in the new Democratic Party platform to arrest us. This is how you bring in totalitarianism. Everything we've been warning about is happening now. Unbelievable. So, the feds give them armored vehicles. The feds militarize the police. The feds teach them instinctive shooting, which then they think they see a gun and they shoot you, and then the cops are like, oh, my God, what did I do? I'm not trying to shoot the guy in the back on purpose in this latest video out of Baton Rouge. He's like, oh, no, oh, God. Knowing his life's over. On a bunch of coffee, rolling around. The guy's got a gun. You're pulling up. They said he had a gun. Then the whole thing goes to hell. That cop knows his life's over. You think he just wanted to shoot somebody? I'm not defending what happened. I don't want that job. You get a Baton Rouge shooting. You get a St. Paul shooting. And it's the end of the world. My daughter's about three weeks ago. We were at my parents, and they had just a TV show on, and a, a ad for The Shallows came on, where great white sharks are chasing this woman trying to eat her. We went to Cancun a few days later, and my daughters that have been getting in the surf since they were three years old did not want to get in it because of great white sharks. And I explained to them, there are no great white sharks in the Caribbean. You're safe. The shark attacks are super rare. They still would barely get in the water. Same thing happened in 1972. They had to put ads for years in newspapers explaining less than 10 shark attacks a year on the coast of the United States, period. Less than five great white attacks. There's less than 12 worldwide every year. Look it up. But they think there's a big shark about to eat them. It's a perception. Just like they create the perception that the police are just mowing black people down everywhere. 250-something in 2015 out of tens of millions of people. It's a total mind game, ladies and gentlemen, to divert from double black unemployment, to divert from being targeted with medical experiments, to divert from mandatory minimum sentences that Bill Clinton put in place that are wrong. It goes on and on, and this will create so much white racism now, which is what they want and black racism to clash us against each other, divide and conquer. 990 people, the FBI's own numbers, died in 2015 from police. Almost all of them justify. But let's say all 990 weren't justified. There are hundreds of deaths a year, 90 plus percent black people in Chicago, and those numbers are only going up. Black on black, you never hear about that because it's not the cops. So people aren't even aware. They don't even have a perception. Thousands and thousands of black people shoot and kill each other a year, and it's not even an issue. But 200 and something get killed by cops. And it's the biggest issue this country ever saw. And this country's on the edge of civil war and being destabilized by George Soros and a group of multinational foundations 
He put $34 million in one month into Ferguson alone to trigger this whole movement. And the Ferguson case was a justified shooting when we looked at it. Some of these aren't. But the, the issue is, this is a synthetic, artificial program. And I'm going to play the clips, get into what happened, break it all down. Our reporters that are on the ground, Kari Jackson, Joe Jennings. We've got all the clips of Black Lives Matter, even here in Austin. Going oink, oink, bang, bang, you're dead. Deck the halls with dead cops, fa la 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 This is the organized attempt to kill so many police and cause so much fear that then Loretta Lynch comes in to, quote, reform the police. It's like Al Sharpton said, we're using the police shootings to federalize and they should all be federalized. Remember that clip? That's all this is, is a power grab. Or some cop in Minnesota does something wrong, so cops die in Dallas because of the color of their skin. Or a cop does something wrong in New York, so cops get killed in Missouri. I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's total bull, and it's orchestrated. The Black Power Political Organization, as it's called, has claimed responsibility online for this and says more killings of white people are coming. And, of course, that will just uh, lead to more institutional targeting of innocent black people, which is part of the larger plan carried out by the Judas goat, Barack Obama. This is truly sickening. Obama has massively increased uh, funding to abort even more black people. I guess 51% wasn't enough. They've jacked that up to 53% now a year. And they basically have forced abortion in a bunch of African countries where if they want to uh, be able to get any type of uh, government training or schooling, uh, or funding, they have to basically get sterilized or agree to not have children. But that's okay, because Obama's supposedly black, uh, so it's all right. Black power group claims responsibility for police killings and warns of more assassinations to come. We've got some compilations of some of these similar groups, including right here in Austin, marching around saying, bang, bang, uh, you know, or oink, oink, bang, bang, you're dead. And it's, just, it's just crazy. The truth is the average cop, be they white, black, or Hispanic, is scared to go into predominantly black areas and are scared to render services. And now uh, crime rates are exploding across the nation in the black areas. And black people are dying. But logic, you know, just seems to get in the way of uh, the brainwashing because you have the president and the mainstream media acting like this is all legitimate, lying to everyone. More black people die in Chicago every year at the hands of black people than die at the hands of the police every year. In fact, we need to put that headline out. That's the FBI's own numbers. Some years, there's over 400 black people that die in Chicago. In fact, let's look up the latest national numbers. Numbers of people that die a year in shootings in Chicago, and 97% are black, so you can get that number. And then total, 250, eight blacks died in 2015, shot by police. And you can come up with a number that in Chicago, more black people die a year at the hands of black people than all police kill every year. But it's not even on the radar screen. Chicago crosses 2,000 shooting victims this year. Yeah, last time I heard it was like, I was going from memory, it was something like 400 dead African Americans. Uh, and I think that's an old number a year in Chicago. So it's 2,000. He's shot. How many is it dead? Oh, but that's a non-issue. I mean, I legitimately care about everybody's lives. I legitimately care that Gardasil's linked to sterilization and lost fertility and that they're shooting every Mexican girl so they can go to public school in Mexico up with it. I legitimately get really pissed off at that. People go, well, how is that you're being overrun by Mexicans who are they being turned into political weapons against America and then but you don't want them sterilized? Yeah, I don't sink to other people's levels. I oppose movements that are evil, but I don't oppose individual human souls. So if, if black folks particular want out of the vice grip they're in, the bear trap, they need to listen to me because I know what's going on. And my message to the police is coming up next and then to Obama and others. I'm going to break all this down, but let's hear from Ben Carson on Fox News today, really breaking it down. Here it is. Well, obviously, it's extraordinarily troublesome. And uh, these people were ready, uh, waiting for an opportunity. And it, it really 
should make us think about what is going to happen. You know, there are terror cells all over our country. There are professional agitators all over our country looking for opportunities. And these opportunities do arise. They will continue to arise because, you know, there are bad apples in the police force like there are bad apples in everything. They're bad surgeons. But the vast majority right. of surgeons are wonderful people. So, uh, you know, these opportunities will continue to happen and, and they will continue to do these things. But I guess the real issue is that, you know, the president's going to start saying, see, gun control, well, and, that and, and, solves and, the problem. And we heard from the president already this morning, uh, even bringing up gun control. Listen to this. Yeah. And, and the Hold on, Dr. Gun Kirsten, control we've got a soundbite. Are... Got a soundbite. Sound okay. Undoubtedly about their twisted motivations. Uh, but let's be clear, there's no possible justification for these kinds of attacks or any violence against law enforcement. We also know that when people are armed with powerful weapons, unfortunately it makes attacks like these more deadly and more tragic. And in the days ahead, we're going to have to consider those realities as well. Uh, pardon the earlier interruption, Doctor. Uh, is right now the time to get political? Uh, now is definitely not the time to get political. Now is the time to use logic and ask ourselves, why do we have a constitution? Why do we have a Second Amendment? They're always saying, you don't need a high-power weapon to hunt deer. The constitution is not about deer hunting. It's about people being able to defend themselves uh, from an overly aggressive government or an external invasion. My message would be that we, the American people, are not each other's enemies, and it, but there are those who are trying to stir us up and create conflict for their own nefarious purposes. And we have to be smart enough not to allow them to succeed. Bingo. Now, when I come back, I'm going to break down the fact of where this is going next. It's going to get a lot worse. ISIS is going to hit as well, and then they're going to have the solution. We're on Taking the march. All of our rights. Now, this is the police chief of Dallas, uh, personally met, seems like a really good guy. He didn't violate our free speech up there when we uh, protested the JFK 40th anniversary, the cover-up. In fact, he just ignored uh, the city when they said that we weren't allowed to demonstrate. So they just hired the Democratic-run sheriff department to attack us later. Uh, over a million people watched that on Ustream alone when that happened live. But uh, here he is, the police chief, uh, David Brown. Uh, who I know has done a pretty good job up in Dallas, been pro Second Amendment. Just he's he's a, he's, a, he's a really good police chief, uh, breaking down exactly what happened and uh, when they talked to this gentleman before the robot detonated a bomb on him, uh, Micah X Johnson. This is what he had to say. Now I want to share with you some of the comments from this suspect. The suspect said he was upset about Black Lives Matter. He said he was upset about the recent police shootings. The suspect said he was upset at white people. The suspect stated he wanted to kill white people, especially white officers. The suspect stated he will eventually, that we will eventually find the IEDs. The suspect stated he was not affiliated with any groups. And he stated that he did this alone. The suspect said other things that are part of this investigation so that we can make sure uh, that everyone associated with this tragic event is brought to justice. Well, let's, let's talk about the elephant in the room here in just one moment. We're going to put special reports together where we document all this. We, we, we've done it previously, but Obama, the Ford Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, the major universities, Hillary Clinton, Google is one of the worst, Facebook, Twitter. They have all pushed memes and pushed the idea that all police are collectively guilty for what somebody in another state or another jurisdiction sometimes 2,000 miles away, did. I mean, if I was, quote, Hispanic, I wouldn't be blamed for the Night Stalker who had the last name Ramirez. I mean, I, I mean if you told me, 
Even I had the last name Ramirez. And they said, oh, this guy Ramirez is a thousand miles away from you, Mr. Ramirez. It's your fault. I'd say, you're a lunatic. And so would anybody else. Or if some KKK group drags some poor black man to death, uh, you know, in, in, in East Texas. I'm not collectively to blame for that. I'm, I'm not the crazy white people, ex-cons that did that. But when cops do something wrong or make a mistake, collectively, anybody in a uniform is then to blame. I, I have some family that are police and, and, and military and things. And I, I, I mean, I take that personally, not because I have some family, but just for common sense to sit there and, oh, it looks like a cop shot a black guy in the back in Minnesota. Well, here, let's just, uh, go, let's just go shoot, you know, 20-something cops. And Black Lives Matter bystanders. Because that'll get justice. And you've got the president coming out saying we need to reform the police. And we need to restrict the Second Amendment. Wow. No, we need to restrict you and your criminal activities. Cut and dry. Cut and dry. George Soros could be indicted today. Black Lives Matter rhetoric is classically Marxist, classically overthrow the state, insurrection, war. They're constantly shooting their mouths off against us. Because, yeah, I want to reform our government. I don't want to have a big bloodbath and a civil war where you stupid communists think you're going to end up on top of things. Do the math, chumps. Maybe there's a few hundred, hundred thousand social justice warrior idiots that don't even know how to use guns properly. You got a few folks that were in the military know how to use guns right here. I mean, you know what a real civil war that's racially based will look like? <laughs> what a joke. What a joke. I'm doing everything I can to stop that. Do you understand? It's not my opinion. This is orchestrated. And I'm not talking to our regular listeners, people that are informed. I'm talking to people at Media Matters and the Daily Beast and, 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 and Time Magazine and all the usual suspects that make jokes about what we talk about here. Look at the headlines today at DrudgeReport.com from newspapers across the country. Civil War, New York Post, Ambush, Dallas Morning News, America descending into a war. Black power group claims responsibility, warns of more assassinations, plans to start a civil war. The end is here. The collapse of America. Well, we may all been taught how to hate America, but you're really going to hate it when your electricity doesn't work and there isn't any food. You think Lehman Brothers going over in 2007, 2008 was a big deal? Deutsche Bank is going under as we speak. We have an expert popping in in the third hour. Peter Schiff. I don't get ahead when black people don't do well. I get behind. And when white people don't do well, let me give a newsflash to everybody. Black people don't do well. We're all interconnected. Everybody is pretty much getting along. And that's why the globalists have to pull this crap. While they're robbing everybody, they've got to get us at each other's throats. And I know I've said that 50 times. And I want to talk to the police specifically about what you must historically do. We know how this has been stopped before. And I'm going to talk about our basic liberties and our freedoms. If we don't get really tough and really aggressive right now. And I've done it. I've sent undercover people into these groups. I'm just going to tell it's not a secret. I mean, we've taken the gloves off around here about a year ago. So that's why we have a lot of really good information. Oh, yeah, we got people going into the communist groups, going into all of them, going into the police review boards. And let me tell you, th this is an organized criminal operation we're facing. These are very dangerous people. Very dangerous. And they got a plan. It's communist in nature. It is not a communist conspiracy. Just like the euro was a Nazi plan, it isn't a Nazi program. It just came from the Nazis. You understand?
Kind of like a fiddler crab can pick up somebody else's shell after it die, you know, after another one dies. That isn't his shell, but he picked it up. It's the same deal. What you're seeing is a communist takeover plan. It isn't communist, it's multinationals. And it's going to cause a bloodbath in this country. I'm going to be just fine, probably. I know what to do. I'm prepared. My family's prepared. We're not stupid. We got gates. We got fences. We're ready. We got the solar power. We got the well on the ground. We got the guns. General public doesn't know what's hitting them. And that's why I'm going to have a message to the police here in a moment and go through some of these clips. Before I go any further, this is, this is just what I was already going to be plugging today. I've decided that we've extended the independence sale through Monday of storable foods, 40%, nutraceuticals, 20%. And I said, you know what, let's do shortwave radios, let's do solar panel systems that are the best out there at the lowest price already. Let's do everything preparedness from optics to G-Shock watches to everything under the sun of the thousands of great items at InfoWarsStore.com to fund our operation and get people products they need. I'm extending this till Monday as we've already done, but it's 10% off on all InfoWars Life products across the board, unless some products already have bigger discounts. If you get auto ship, it's 10% off on top of that. Free shipping on orders, $50 or more. I mean, it's just savings on top of savings. Survival Shield X2 is 20% off. 10% off on the optics, on just, just everything. Food, water filters, G-Shock watches, seeds, solar generators, survival gear, and more. 20% off on all radios, 20% off on all ProPure and Alexa Pure water filters, 20% off on the Survival Seed Vaults and more. There's so many specials, I can't go over all of them. All these specials will stay until Monday unless something sells out like X2 that's set to sell out very, very soon. And I got to hold some back for folks that are signed up on auto ship. So we are the tip of the spear. We've got our reporters everywhere now for almost every big breaking news issue. We're there with our intrepid. Reporters, pray for Jakari and Joe Jennings that are up there in Dallas right now. Joining us coming up in about an hour. Infowarslife.com is where you find the nutraceuticals. Everything's 10% off unless it's more than that, like X2. And again, 40% off on storable foods. Infowarsstore.com is the umbrella site. Uh, Hillary for prison shirts uh, are available. I signed the contract, and I'm going to out them at the bottom of the next hour. I signed the contract with the biggest uh, air advertising company in the nation. They also run the big blimps. Like they're the blimp company, and uh, their higher-ups said, no, we're not going to allow you to run anti-Hillary signs. I could, I could probably, I mean, this is, this, is, this is absolutely a violation of free speech. I'd already signed the contract. It's, it's Van Wagner Aerial Media. It's on screen right now. I, uh, that's just a copy of the blank contract, but I, but I signed it last week. $30,000 in Cleveland, $30,000 in Philadelphia. 10,000 for the two banners, and uh, they said, uh, sorry, our higher-ups saw the Hillary for prison sign, and we're not going to be associated with that. We're worried about repercussions. Hey, let your chain sit lightly upon you. May you forget that you, uh, you are our countrymen. Crouch down and lick the hand that feeds you, as Patrick Henry said, as for me, give me liberty or death. We already had all these patriot groups already calling us with aircraft. So because of this, we're going to launch double the aircraft, because I'm sure they'll try to shut us down. We're going to just go ahead and do aircraft all the days of both conven uh, conven uh, uh, conventions. And uh, we're going to do a bunch of other stuff now. We're pulling out the stops, so you're not going to stop us. But I have the head of a Patriot Air Group uh, joining us that will not be deterred. We just got to hurry now because these fancy banners are hard to print just a week and a half out. So they were going to press on our two $5,000 banners apiece, giant Hillary for President shirts, uh, uh, banners. So, so buy the shirts, okay? Shop with us. Get things you need, whether it's the best optics, the best uh, systems. It's all there, InfoWarsStore.com. And I'm taking all proceeds from the Hillary for Prison shirts and putting it towards the air campaign. And believe me, it's going to be effective to have gigantic banners. These aren't just the little ones. These are humongous. Flying around the DNC and RNC. And will this save the world? Will this bring her down? No, but the resistance will. The spirit will. The never giving up, the never bowing down, the never giving in. So thank you for your support, support our local affiliates as well. All right, let me start over and recap here. I could fill this four-hour show today 
with clips in the last few years where I said specifically Black Lives Matter towards the 2016 election will be activated and is funded by offshore crime syndicates. That's what George Soros says is a crime boss. It's not my opinion. He's been indicted all over the world. He's got arrest warrants out in six countries, including Russia. He should have been swinging from a rope 60 years ago for what he did for the Nazis. But he's too criminal to jail like Hillary. And he's been running anti-free speech operations in this country. He funds Media Matters, whose mission is to infiltrate and bring down Americana media. And he funded an anti-police brutality movement in Ukraine three years ago that overthrew the government. He did that in Egypt, too. That's where this stuff starts. Because they know people are mad at the cops. Society's breaking down. Cops make a lot of mistakes. There's some bad people in there. You target who's the easiest target to scapegoat. They've done it before. He admits he's funding Black Lives Matter and these other groups. Black Lives Matter is just the front for the president and Hillary. And, and, and Google gives them the top links. And Google came out today and said, we need to reform the police. The president said that. He meets with them weekly. The police need to know that the Strong Cities Initiative by the UN launched six months ago by Loretta Lynch and outgoing head Eric Holder. Remember, it was mainstream news. UN to oversee local departments. They already are suing police chiefs and, 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 and sheriffs. I mean, you name it. It's happening. They're directing the refugee program outside of law. Not a UN takeover. The globalists set it up. The robber baron set it up to transfer our power to. But it's the front. So Google says we need Black Lives Matter hashtag. We need racial justice now. Google is tweeting that. Of course, guys worth $100 billion a piece. You know, it's all a big joke to them. This is how the elite bring us down, okay? So the police departments, this isn't my opinion. You already know it. I already talked to a lot of police. You knew this years ago, but, but this is a globalist attempt at civil war, a takedown of the country. Grand juries must start indicting people on Facebook and Twitter and other platforms that by name call for killing police and others racially. That's not free speech. That's organizing criminal operations like the plan of San Diego that Mexico launched uh, during World War I. It's sedition. It's run by foreign economic powers. And it's meant to bring the country into such turmoil that all civil liberties, human rights get suspended. And they're going to come after the guns. So the gloves have to come off to save the entire system. Not that the system's perfect, but what they're going to put in is going to be ten times worse. And we have to get uber aggressive. And grand juries must start indicting these groups. Not for open carry in Austin, but for open carry saying kill the police. And you better know the reason they don't indict these groups is they're federally led. It came out the Justice Department was caught running most of these major organizations. And they get a bunch of useful idiots to go out and do all this so that then they can try to trigger a major crash. I'm going to skip this network break because this is so important. If the police capitulate to this, and local governments do, and oh, there's a new board and some UN funding, and let's go to dinner with them, they're going to give the police chief an award, and if you go to these events, and, 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 and if you take their directives, because they're going to be nice to you now, because you're going to follow their directives, that's not what's happening. They're getting ready to set you up, they want to penetrate so they can set you up, and then they're going to absolutely globalize and federalize and munialize your operation. It's already happened in many areas. And you notice the areas that go along with this get even more taken control of because the global organized crime wants full control of departments to shut off money laundering and drug running investigations into larger crime units. This is organized crime corrupting and infiltrating. Soros runs the quantum group that MI6 has basically described as the real specter. They know what they're doing and they've overthrown other countries doing this. I cannot repeat that enough. And so, day one, Obama, Google, Jesse Jackson, everybody says it's the cops' fault, reform the police, and the Second Amendment. And Al Sharpton, we can maybe pull that clip up, Al Sharpton you know, says, federalize the police. Admitting that they're creating this huge controversy to distract from their bad record, how they're bringing the country down to cause insurrection, how they are manipulating us into this point.
He says it's kind of an anti-black mood. Reverend Jesse Jackson points the finger at Donald Trump and his followers for the rise of mean-spirited division in America. I mean, Donald Trump isn't mean-spirited 1% compared to these Soros-run groups. What a, what a sick joke. And the Reverend Jackson won't talk about the 2,000 people shot a year in Chicago. That's right. More black people die every year in Chicago, black-on-black -black crime, than die from the police. 258 a year. Let's just say none of them are justified. It, why is that the number one issue? Why won't most adults swim in the ocean? Because they think Jaws is in the water, even though he's not. It's mind control. And this idiot, one of the three, they have one of them in custody, two dead. Micah X. Johnson, fast facts you need to know. U.S. Army. Running around doing this. I'm going to tell all the morons, especially the white ones. There was a meeting last night that one of my associates was going to have with a lady about a business deal. She has a supplement. I'll just leave it at that. It's a pretty good one. It's sold in Whole Foods. The meeting couldn't happen in a restaurant at 7 o'clock because she had a boyfriend she got pregnant with that's from India. And she's a white liberal, classic 30-year-old white woman. She's too depressed to get out of bed because she thinks her son's going to be killed by the police and has to fight racism. I looked at the crime statistics. There is not a listed Indian man shot in 2015. Why is that no Indians? There's, there's millions of Indians in the country. No Indians killed. None. There's like four or five Chinese killed. Why is that? There's 500 and something whites, 200 and something blacks, 170 something Hispanics. Why is that? See, and you sit here and you look at this, it's crazy. This woman can't get out of bed. She's watching MSNBC and oh, they're killing all the black people. Oh, oh God, the my son's going to be murdered. Oh, I mean, oh, oh, oh. you get on the phone with these people and they go, listen, cheer up, come to the meeting. You're like, no, I can't, I can't. Just, can you imagine? These people are under mind control. So this guy, he, he thinks the same thing, but he's a man. Wow, the cops are killing all my people. I got to go out and kill her right now. That's mind control. Let's go ahead and play this compilation. There's a whole bunch of these on Infowars.com. Different groups, Black Lives Matter groups, and the new Black Panther Party running around saying kill the cops. But the first clip is just uh, from two nights ago, marching, saying kill the cops. Here it is. <laughs> Shoot back. That's the communist slogan, by the way. They have a whole local communist website. Tommy said shoot back. They came out and physically tried to attack us. What do we want? Dead cops. What do we want? Dead cops. So that'll work out well for you. What do we want? Dead cops. This is New York. So what do we want? We want dead cops. And Obama has given four speeches saying the big issue in America is white people are being mean to black people. Yes, that's why whites elected a black president. That's all they got, though, folks. They want to create division. And the chanting goes on, what do we want, dead cops? What do we want, dead cops? we've got there's no peace or whatever i understand till we accept the u.n strong cities initiative to turn the police into anti-free speech green bots that arrest all the patriots that are exposing global warming we get it 
And so they just want to absolutely make this the number one issue in America, have us all fighting with each other, and cause a soft civil war that leads into a real civil war, all magically escalating as we go into the last four months before the election. And then it goes to another clip. Everybody out here. They all know everything. This is two nights ago in New York. And we have Austin. Oink, oink, bang, bang, you're dead. Just like everybody else. No justice, no peace. There are no justice, oh my God. Number one issue is the police killing us. It's upset. It's it's done. It's done. The system the system needs to be fixed. Then the police are gonna act all whacked out and are gonna mess with people. It's gonna make it only worse. Two men and the weak, two black men. It's just when you heard from their mothers, what went through your mind thinking about your son? I just think that it could happen to anyone. It doesn't matter. Educated, not educated. From the hood, notice they're saying, please don't kill me for being black today. Okay, 258 people. That's that's not good. And that's total, not, not just unjustified shooting. Total. Okay, let's say it, it's a problem. This woman could care less though that half the black people are aborted. Are dying out here in these streets, and this is not. These are just young, dumb people brainwashed by the media. Protecting us on these streets by killing us. And now the police will be totally scared of everybody. It's going to get worse. And then we have the bang, bang, oink, oink. Can we cue that up? And of course, we have a flashback on Infowars.com. New Black Panther Party marches through Austin, Texas at South by Southwest. Um, so here, here, here's some of that. We'll be back, oink, oink, bang, bang. I mean, this is all Zoros, George Soros funded. Just absolute, total idiocy. We'll be back, second hour, stay with us. Kari Jackson from Dallas is going to pop in in about five minutes from now. Then I'm going to take some of your phone calls. The toll-free number to join us, especially if you're a police officer, uh, or if you are in Dallas and witnessed any of this, or if you're a Black Lives Matter, Trigley Puff, uh, social justice warrior, whatever, communist. I mean, if you know how to dial a phone, I'm not kidding. These people are really dumb. Uh, we like to hear from you. Can we cue up the bang, bang, you're dead, uh, oink, oink, you're dead stuff from Austin that we shot last year? And imagine you got a bunch of drunk people at South by Southwest standing around who are about as racist as a... As a rock on the ground with people just marching around with guns not to exercise the second amendment but to say we're going to kill cops as if doing that makes the police scared of you in the way you think they just don't go into your neighborhood now and criminals can run around do whatever you want and i'm telling you you look at the new black panther party people in this video if you're a tv viewer or radio listener go to infowars.com forward slash show i don't know what it is about clan rallies i've covered or these racist black rallies, but I mean, these people look, whether they're white or black, they have this show, just like, d just dumber than a dog look in their eyes. I mean, they are just so stupid. And we ought to compare them to Klan rallies, because I'm telling you, the only people, I don't know what it is, they, they all have the same slack, dumb, just look at these people. Look at these people. Look at these guys. Just look how dumb that guy on the end looks right there. Just totally stupid. And they all have, I mean, look at this moron. Just, just randomly, let's kill the police. Look at this guy. This guy. Uh, we got to fade some of that down. I'm sorry. There's some cussing in here. We'll delete that. I forgot this is a, a, a raw tape. I guess we can't play it. There's so much. Bang, bang, you're dead. You know, kill the pigs. All this is going to do is get the police more militarized and more out of control. 
And all this is going to do is create more division in this country. But you see, to idiots, they don't know that. They really think that this is helping because they see Obama and they see Google and they see Jesse Jackson and they see Hillary, everybody catering to this and saying, yes, you're right. It's a terrible thing. You are the epitome of what's good in this country because 258 black people were shot by police in 2015. And 2,000 people were shot in Chicago, 90 plus percent black, and more die every year in Chicago, black on black shootings, than die total from police. But again, it's okay because a black person did it. And they don't have all the numbers, but something like 35%, I saw the number on CNN, who knows if it's true, years ago, of the shootings on average are black on black with police. So you're talking about 100 and something of white or other officers shooting black people. I mean, it's super rare, folks. But out of 330 million people, you can get one sometimes in the summer, every couple of days, you know, when crime is up or whatever, in the winter or whatever, maybe you have to wait a week or so to have one to, to use and hype up and in line. And, and, and look, I'll be completely honest. I don't like corrupt authority. I'm a fighter. And so I've been arrested at demonstrations by police that were wrong. I, I've, I, I've run into thug cops. I've had a jail guard, a redhead jail guard, run my head in the wall once. For no reason. And I don't like seeing the globalists use the police to carry out their operations. And I've written books and made films called Police State 2000. 9-11 to sent into tyranny. But again, this is a globalist plan to bring the country down. So I'm absolutely, totally against it. Because uh, it's, it's, I'm going to play a bunch of clips. Go to Jakari, go to your phone calls, break down the latest on what's happened, but but here's the bottom line. They are successfully kicking off a civil war in this country ahead of the election. Major banks are on the verge of imploding. Just, just, this is an incredible time to be alive right now. I've been predicting for at least four years that they would try to launch some type of civil war based on uh, kind of a communist slash Black Lives Matter movement funded by George Soros, funded by multinationals. George Soros has overthrown Ukraine starting with anti-police demonstrations, playing Catholic off against Orthodox. They'll just take any groups they can with the sociology and do this. They did it in Egypt, starting with anti-police demonstrations and overthrew our allies. Remember that. They did that uh, in, in other areas as well. Soros admits he's doing it. He spent hundreds of millions on this, 35 million alone, launching it. The Justice Department got caught running the Trayvon Martin demonstrations. Does that mean there aren't problems with the police? Absolutely. Do we cover it? We're on the cutting edge of that. To reform police. But if a cop shoots somebody wrong in Minnesota or in Louisiana this week, do you randomly go to Dallas and then injure 15 cops and kill five and then shoot some of the Black Lives Matter demonstrators that are out there? This is crazy until you realize Obama has double black unemployment. At least the globalist policies have. All they have is this division. This, the, 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 this is their program. And Obama has come out in the latest shooting. Here's Politico. We played the clip last hour and says U.S. police must reform. Wow. As if the Dallas cops reformed, this wouldn't have happened. Even though they got a black police chief and most of their leadership's black. Even though Dallas is like 60% black. I mean, that's crazy, ladies and gentlemen. And I grew up in Dallas. And I, and I, and I, I was, bro, the Dallas cops were do a pretty good job overall. The point is, is that this is crazy. And now we've got Jesse Jackson blaming Trump, everybody else. This is totally organized. You have this black nationalist, quote, uh, political movement that's taken responsibility. And it's the first time we've had a robot by the police used to kill uh, the supposed ringleader, Micah X. Johnson, who was an army soldier. And you've got people all over Twitter and all over Facebook, sick Black Lives Matter supporters celebrate murder of Dallas cops. You have Google coming out saying, we must have justice. So, so, so not saying this is horrible. No, justice will fix this. 258 black people killed by police in 2015. We got the numbers, 2,000, 90 plus percent black in Chicago shot last year. Over 500 
You don't even hear that, do you? You got Chicago, double the number of black people killed. But you don't hear about it because it's a Democrat-run anti-gun city. And they're going to blame the Second Amendment. They're going to try to bring in this whole crisis culture where they federalize the police and globalize the police. And then they'll call off these groups of useful idiots that are being stirred up. This is mind control, where the media hypes people into believing this is the ultimate story. Jakari Jackson got up, I guess at like midnight last night, I'm told. They drove out. They were there at 4 a.m. in Dallas. But Joe Jennings will say, great job getting that done. And he's now just a block away from where the mass shooting happened. Uh, and, and, and folks, I'm telling you, I just hope there aren't more of these. But just with the ISIS groups and the rest of it, I, I, I suspect we're going to see a lot more of this. Uh, Jakari uh, Jackson, I know you've talked to some eyewitnesses. That's coming up. But I got to tell you, we're not tooting our horn here. We're just warning people, showing we know what we're talking about. How much have we predicted this? How much have we covered this? How many of these demonstrations have you personally been to and been tear gassed and rubber bulleted with Joe Biggs? I mean, you can really see the media beating the drums into the election, trying to make this the issue. I mean, Obama giving a speech yesterday on this and then groups calling for killing a police. Uh, what is your take on this, Shikari? I mean, absolutely, we know that violence towards any group is definitely an issue in this country, whether it's uh, police on the citizenry or the citizenry on police, or as you pointed out, uh, all the black people in Chicago. You know, it's become somewhat of a uh, a misnomer. It's just something that you come to expect in Chicago that every 4th of July, a large amount of people will get shot. I, I think this year is 60 some odd people over the 4th of July weekend, and it's just become somewhat of a regular thing. But as you pointed out, those issues in, Ch in Chicago don't get as much attention as when police shoot somebody. And it's not just when they shoot black people, but when you think about somebody like uh, Kelly Thomas in California, a white man who was beaten to death over the course of 20 minutes on video, uh, if I recall, no indictments. You know, people were outraged about that. But they say that you're only supposed to get mad if it's a black person who is uh, beaten or uh, shot by the police in some very uh, unnecessary type of way. And as we're out here right now, Alex, you can see it's a very calm scene. Uh, heavy police presence. If you look all the way around, uh, there are cops on pretty much every street corner. That red brick building behind me, that is the structure, the parking garage where the shooting came from last night. And we had a chance to speak to a young lady who was out here last night. She was walking in the demonstration. She went to the nearby McDonald's to get some food, and she said the shots rang out. She said she uh, got down on the ground. Um, officers came up to her like, get out of here, get out of here. Uh, she said she heard uh, at least 30 rounds fired before she fled. She's awfully traumatized, and she said she's actually kind of stuck out here because uh, she can't get her car back because they have most of the area blocked off out here. And as uh, you look down the streets, you see uh, a light civilian, but uh, heavy police. And, you know, everybody's on uh, high alert. We talked to some guys, other guys who said they can't get their cars out of here because the police locked down. We tried to get down to the press staging area, which last night we were able to get to. But tonight we were, or this morning, we were not able to get in that area. And they said, well, we had to cap it. We didn't want a bunch of people walking around out there as they're still conducting uh, active investigation. We saw the feds out here a little bit ago taking pictures. Uh, somebody even told us they were still picking up shell casings. So this is still an ongoing and active crime scene here in Dallas. I know you've been working, but have you had a chance to see all the dramatic footage of this guy ducking behind columns and then going around and shooting the cops? I mean, definitely he had a lot of military training. You can't blame the military training for it. You have to blame the mental illness or whatever, you know, that triggered uh, this uh, in these folks. But uh, separate from that, Jakari, we know Soros is financing this. We know they used anti-police demonstrations in Ukraine to, to start the revolution there. Uh, what is your view overall of that? Because it seems to be going into high gear. When you talk about Soros, whether it's here or uh, I should say more particularly when you talk about some place like Ferguson, where there are paying demonstrators to go out there to yell, to, you know, get rowdy and all this. And then the demonstrators complain on Twitter when they didn't get their check. I didn't get my, my check to go out there and yell to cops this week. Uh, it's completely absurd. And it just foments this type of racism, not just uh, against the police, but against whites in general. Because if you recall, uh, the words of was it Michael Micah X Johnson, I believe, was the suspect they got last night. They shot him with the police robot. He said uh, it was reported that he hated whites, that he wanted to inflict violence on the police. And as you were pointing out earlier, yes, we do see police injustice going on around the country, but that doesn't make it right to go out here and shoot just random guys who happen to be walking down the street. That's exactly. Let's attack. say let's exactly let's say hypothetically one of my kids, God forbid this ever happened, a bad cop on video kills one of my kids in cold blood and then doesn't get in trouble. I'll be honest with you, uh, you know, you know I, I would probably do something. That's the kind of guy I am. 
Why don't these people then, if they think a cop's so bad, go after that cop themselves? I'm not saying do that. I'm just saying why randomly a thousand miles from Minnesota because a cops may have done something bad, just go shoot a bunch of cops. I mean, I just can't imagine projecting onto them when departments are so different, people are so different. How do you just randomly say, there's cops 50 yards away, they're to blame, I'm going to kill them? Oh, well, once again, why Dallas was selected, I'm not exactly sure. But I did read something that was very interesting uh, a couple of weeks ago. They're talking about the mass exodus of Dallas police officers. They said in May alone, 40 people left the department. So I'm not sure if the understaffing or the uh, decreased staffing had anything to do with why Dallas was selected for this particular shooting. But when you see so many officers, of course, that increases the, uh, the suspect's odds for success of escaping if that is indeed the suspect's goal. Well, sure. I mean, my dad left dentistry, even though he had another 10 years to work. He was most successful at that point, managing over 100 clinics. He left because of Obamacare, because it's impossible to even follow it. It's all just a scam meant for big multinational corporations to take control of everything. They're the only ones that can actually follow all the paperwork and the rest of it. And, 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 and most seasoned doctors are leaving. And it's the same thing with police who really want to serve. It's so corrupt now. Uh, it's so out of control. They're such targets that they're just not policing anymore. They're either quitting or they're slow rolling, which is making the murder rate skyrocket, Jakari. Well, I think that's what's referred to as the Ferguson effect. And you can talk about what is the chicken or the egg. Was it the, the people's response or was it the, the officer's response that kind of caused that? And that's a debate that I don't think it's ever going to be officially resolved in the annals of history. But yes, we have seen uh, officers being more cautious when they approach the scene. But sometimes that is uh, a very good thing because we definitely see uh, like the uh, the young guy who got shot in the back by the officer. We're not here in Dallas, but got shot in the back by the officer and the officer planted a weapon on him. You know, you, you also have those things. Oh, absolutely. Uh, look, their society's degenerating. There's a bunch of scum there. And then the police department, too. Jakari, you're a smart guy. I mean, you know, I've seen you all here make a lot of predictions that have come true. What is your gut about this year? I mean, I think we're going to see more ISIS cells, more police shootings. It seems like the establishment, the media, is really trying to turn the heat up and exacerbate this as much as they can. Well, we've seen a lot of terror attacks, I believe, in June. Well, I can't recall the exact number, but it's an astronomical number, not just here in the States, but uh, of people who were killed in terror attacks. It's over 300 the terror attacks this year yeah. so far. Yeah, that's what it was. It's uh, completely ridiculous. It's continuing to grow as far as will we see more shootings like this. I can't say for sure. I definitely hope not. I hope also you know, the ISIS attacks will stop. But to see so much of a running start that they got this year, if it continued, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Well, I know this. They need to take the gloves off. Uh, look, if a white supremacist group is online saying, let's organize and kill, say, Hispanics, arrest them. You're not allowed to do that. But they're smart enough not to do that because they would get arrested. They're not going after the Black Lives Matter people that are saying kill Donald Trump, go after us, go at, kill the cops. They need to be arrested, Jakari. I mean, if you're online organizing murder, they need to arrest these people and stop letting them organize. Yeah, I mean, regardless of the group, is because we see like uh, groups on social media like ISIS. You know, they say, well, we have to keep ISIS on social media so we can track them. Like, well, okay, if you would track them and actually stop them before they do these attacks. Maybe I could understand this more, but you're allowing them to grow on social media. Then you're blaming everybody who is not the actual trigger man for it, whether it's a society or it's Donald Trump or it's this guy or it's that guy. I'm like, what happened to blaming the guy who actually pulled the trigger? You could be mad at somebody without going out there and pulling a trigger. Absolutely. Jakari Jackson, one more segment with you. Then we're going to start opening the phones up and taking calls. I got a bunch of clips. I want to run through the news. And, and, and you, we're going to have my predictions of what I think is coming up specifically that will stop this. Welcome back. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Uh, bottom line, George Soros, the globalist, Obama, Hillary Clinton, they are behind this attack. I'm not going to sit back and watch their Justice Department, George Soros, created basically communist uh, detonator group, come out and do another group of cop killings and then blame the Second Amendment and blame free speech in this country. And then blame just local governments and local police across the board. That is the essence of totalitarianism, is to just blame whole groups of people. That's crazy. In fact, that's like racism against people in uniform. I mean, that's what racism is, is just mindless tribalism. I don't want the police treating me like I'm a criminal just because I'm a citizen. I get mad when they do that. That's a form of tribalism. But, but it, it, again, it's a plan to bring the country down. I want to get other angles from Jakari Jackson, our reporter in Dallas. I'm in Austin, Texas. But first, here is the police chief, uh, again, getting into the motive of the man they talked to before they sent a robot in to kill him. 
Now, this is Police Chief David Brown. And I want to share with you some of the comments from this suspect. The suspect said he was upset about Black Lives Matter. He said he was upset about the recent police shootings. The suspect said he was upset at white people. The suspect stated he wanted to kill white people, especially white officers. The suspect stated he will eventually, that we will eventually find the IEDs. The suspect stated he was not affiliated with any groups. And he stated that he did this alone. But that's not true. The suspect said other things that are part of this investigation so that we can make sure no, that's good. Uh, that everyone associated with this. So for me, wow, there's bombs out there. We can't buy those at the store. And then on top of that, they sent a robot in to kill him. A lot of uh, unprecedented things happening here, Jakari, other angles. Absolutely. Uh, to quickly recount the events, we also have an interview coming up with a young lady, an eyewitness, was out here last night when things unfolded. As the police chief was referencing right there, maybe some new information has come out, but I'm looking at this BBC article, and it says that two snipers had fired from an elevated position, uh, some shooting officers in the back. So BBC is reporting at least two triggermen. Depending on which site you go to, which source you go to, I've seen as many as six people involved. It doesn't mean that all people had a gun in their hand, but they're saying that as many as six people could have been involved in some way. And the main suspect that was killed with the robot, as far as I know, this is the first time in Dallas that they've had to use a, uh, a bomb robot to kill somebody, uh, Micah X. Johnson, as he expressed there in the interview there, Alex, uh, he had said resentment towards white people, towards white police officers. Uh, he saw this as some type of retribution, and he opened fire out here. Now, there's also another gentleman who was named as a suspect but was later cleared by police officers because he was open carrying during the event. So uh, after the shooting took place, he was encouraged by family members to go turn himself in. He surrendered his firearm to police officers. And after a talk with the man, they said that he was not a threat. But it's the danger of the social media, Alex, how this man was suspected. But a lot of people started to give him death threats after his name came up, after his image came up. So now he's having to deal with all that because of the very quick reaction of people who understandably wanted to get him off the street, but also put him, put him in danger when they put out that information. Well... The essence of an idiotic race war, or a civil war for that matter, is you just go after somebody because of what color uniform they have or where they live or what color they are. And that's why we don't need racist white people to go around and start shooting black people or vice versa. That's the same reason you don't just want to shoot cops because they're wearing a blue uniform. I mean, that, that's why you go after someone that actually does something to you, not just because someone is in a group. And I think the media, in the name of ending racism, has hyped us into this whole system where it's gone beyond that now everything is about color and it seems like we've really gone backwards under obama jukari do you agree with that a and b do you think that was done by design as far as racial relations i don't think they're any better under obama i definitely would not say that i don't recall granted i'm probably more awake now than i was you know back before 2008 but i don't recall racism on this level where it was so apparent every day some new article and not just racism but whether it's sexism or some type of discrimination, you know, whatever, uh, it seems much more apparent now than it was prior to 2000. Sure, exactly. Clearly, Obama and the media are just hyping the daylights out of this. What do you make of Google and Obama and people saying police need to reform, implying th that it's their fault this happened? Because these are well, cops that got killed. We don't know what they did. We don't know yeah. if they need to be reformed. Well, I think... With anything, this is something for the police to come out and say, well, this is why we need MRAP. This is why we need the heavy body armor because we may have to deal with these types of situations. And when stuff like this happens, I can't really blame them so much for saying that they want that stuff. Not saying that I necessarily want them to use it in every situation. So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to be hype. It's going to continue to be hype. It's also the anti-gun angle, as you pointed out. Uh, the guy was saying that he had IEDs. Thus, to my knowledge, they have not recovered any IEDs in the area but even if the dick guy did have one like we've seen uh, in other places around the world you don't buy those at absolutely you, know, at you don't buy those at, at academy uh, uh, great job jakari more with you guys coming up infowars.com we'll be back we've got a guest on for like 10 minutes with us and it is an important topic it deals with the first amendment then we're gonna go to your phone calls if you're in dallas or a police officer or uh, a, a a citizen that 
uh, wants to respond to what you're witnessing here. Undoubtedly, George Soros is trying to cause a civil war in the country, and now mainstream media admits that's where it's going, with Google and the president and, and everybody in the, in the establishment saying, reform the police, it's your fault. If you would grovel better and if, and if you were nicer, this would happen. And, and the main shooter, reportedly several dead and then someone else in custody, says that the end is here. This is the end of the world race war that MTV-funded hip-hop since the 80s has been saying is coming, as if the U.S. with 5% of the world population falling will end the world, or as if having a civil war is going to be good for anybody. It's just, it's just totally manufactured. A total diversion right into this election. 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. And if you are a police officer, you go to the head of the line to give us your take on this, or if you are a social justice warrior, Trigley Puff, Black Lives Matter, whatever, I'd like to hear from you as well. 800-259-9231. Cleveland's coming up in about a week and a half. The RNC, I was going to put a couple flights a day, twice a day there, and then also coming up at the events in the DNC in Philadelphia. And I remember even saying, okay, we'll go out and talk to some of the biggest companies out there. And uh, But I said, have a couple backups, because I, I think they'll refuse to even print our banner, Hillary for president. In fact, Buckley was asking for this last night. Has a big sheet, a big color printout of, of, of what the banner looks like. I was going to get it yesterday for a news clip I was doing last night. I never got it, so I didn't do it then either. Uh, if, if I could have that, uh, I would show people that on television right now and for radio listeners. But, but it's a big banner, uh, Hillary for prison. 2016, very visible, not just a long skinny banner to be towed by a plane, but the big giant fat ones. It's just, it's just huge. And we're going to fly that because she's not above the law around the RNC and the DNC. And we got a call yesterday after I'd signed the contract uh, on Monday by Van Wagner Aerial Media, one of the biggest in the country, LLC. And I can show TV viewers a picture of the contract here. And I signed it. And they call it and they said, well, the, the owner of the company, the CEO, just doesn't want to be involved in this because there will be political repercussions. And all I want to say is let your chains set lightly upon you, like Patrick Henry said. Forget you are our countrymen uh, and go from us in peace. Because cowards may cry peace, peace, but there is no peace. And th this is this climate of attacking free speech in this country. So the long-term weather forecast for a week and a half show it pretty pretty clear out there. So I'm going to hire a couple companies and we're going to try to double down. And I want to invite anybody else with aerial companies, put up your own banner, come Hillary for president or whatever your free speech message is. Imagine having 10 planes in the air at one time going around over Cleveland or over the DNC. I mean, if you own an aerial company, I, I'm putting all the profits from Hillary for president shirts into this. I'm not even intending to take any profit this year. So far, I've not been paid anything. I am Hiring new people, putting everything we've got into the fight for this country because this country's in trouble. Globals are trying to cause a civil war. And so I do have the sign. Thank you very much. Here it is for TV viewers. This is the demo we sent them weeks ago. This is what we were paying for. And then now it's almost too late to print it at you know this giant size, something like 50 by something, one of the biggest banners they can make. It's humongoid. We can still make them almost as big. I got to sign contracts today. Certainly to make the RNC, but I think the DNC is even more important. So it's Hillary for President 2016, Infowars.com. That's the banner. And then they wait over a week, because they had the banners a week and a half ago. And then they wait, and then, oh, sorry, we can't do that. But that's fine. That's fine. Listen, go move to North Korea. I bet Kim Jong-un would like it. Maybe he can play basketball with him. Uh, Van Wagner Aerial Media. And we first went to them to look, to look into blimps, but those are way too expensive. In fact, they're one of the main blimp companies. Now, joining us to talk about this, and we'll obviously have him on while it's all happening. He's going to be out there. Uh, I hope he'll work with us, you know, just to organize this. But maybe I should start a fundraising drive and you know, try to put five, ten planes in the air at once. Imagine that. Because this is the type of stunt in front of the world media that can have a big effect. That's why they're afraid of it. Justin Wayne, FlySigns.com.
just started working for Banner Operations in 89 and started making the Banner equipment for worldwide distribution in 92. He has multiple production facilities in both the U.S. and Mexico, making aerial billboards and Banner equipment. He is currently one of the biggest Banner towing operators in the USA with access to over 120 airplanes nationwide and currently service every U.S. city. So maybe he can haunt you a plan for us because they tried to censor us. I, I, I almost want to just put like 10 times, but I just don't have the money. So folks, go to InfoWarsStore.com. Buy a bunch of Hillary for prison shirts. At least have those on the ground. But Justin even predicted to us yesterday who who we were using and who had who had who had refused to do business with us after stringing us along. Uh, so wow, refusal of service. You know, you know, you can sue people if you want a gay wedding cake. By the way, I'm a libertarian. I'd do your cake. I mean, whatever. But I guess it's okay to censor us and say we're not taking your money. We won't say Hillary for prison. I wonder if I should sue them. No, you know what? I'll just take my business elsewhere. But this is the climate and the mindset of this country. Get your five-star rated shirt today, and it's all going to this. I mean, in fact, if you buy 10,000 of them, I can put three or four airplanes in the air every day. Our budget is to sell 5,000 shirts. I mean, come on, folks. we got millions of listeners. Go buy the shirt. If you bought 50,000 shirts, I'll put blimps in the air. I'll have huge billboards all over the town. It's just we got to spend money to defeat these people. I'm all in. I don't need another car. I don't need a bigger house. I'm nothing against money. Money gives you the power to do what you want, but we're going to lose all of our free choice and all of our money if we don't invest now in the fight. We've been rolling over too long. Justin Jay, I'm ranting right now. It's just incredible, though, uh, to see all this unfold. Uh, what's your view on all this? Um, you know, I'm not surprised what, what happened with, with the cancellation of the contract. And, um, well, <laughs> Yeah, what I am surprised is is they um, that they gave us so much lead time to uh, to, to prepare a, a, another another uh, campaign. So uh, typically they they might do that a day or two before the event, and then we and then we have no chance to to get something. And just in. to be clear, you've been yeah. contacting us weeks ago when you heard about this, and and I just let other folks choose a place, which is fine. We'd actually were going to use you before for the JFK 40th, but it was rained out, you know, literally thunderstorms every day, freezing weather and ice. So that got canceled. So we were already going to use you as a patriot. You'd already reached out, already given us big discounts. So I don't know why I had a brain fart and didn't go back to you to begin with. But uh, thank you for reaching out to us. No worries, Alex. I appreciate the call and, and the opportunity. What would you do to maximize, uh, I mean, the effect? Because, you know, they may say FAA rules now and just ban us. And, and then that'll just be more attention to the censorship. Um, you, you know, we're, we're expecting some type of, of flight restrictions. Um, the more attention that's brought to this campaign, um, the more likely there will be some. Um, but we'll be able to get in there pretty pretty close, and um, and a lot of people are going to see these these signs for sure. Absolutely, and the, and the people are going to ask, you know, why are they trying to censor it? So, uh, what is your experience? I mean, how are you able to, calling us to predict a who we'd used and b that they would refuse us because it, it did happen. Um. Um, I, I've heard of it before, uh, number one. And number two, um, I think they're a multi-billion dollar entity. Um, I don't think they need your money for, for, the, for the, the problems that this campaign would. would yeah, they're globalists. Would, Absolutely. Right yeah. yeah, they just don't need to do it. That's my biggest downfall is uh, activism is where you spend your dollars. But I get so busy, I tend to not do that. It's like when the MI5 met me in, in, in local police. To cover Bilderberg, they said, why are you staying in a corporate chain hotel? Why are you not staying in a mom and pop? You claim you're fighting these people. Why aren't you buying local? And I said, wow, are you really chewing me out to be mean? They said, yeah, that's how we're going to beat them. And it actually taught me a lesson, but you're absolutely right. We need to go with the uh, you know Americana folks uh, like your company, FlySigns.com. Right. Right. We're, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're on board with you, Alex. I've been a longtime listener, supporter. And uh, I'm glad we're getting the opportunity to work with you on this thing. We're we're uh, we're discounting down for for uh, um, for you, so so maybe you can use some of the resources in other areas. Well, I tell you, um, I I, I want to up the campaign. So thanks for the you know the discount, but I almost just want to tell people that folks with money ought to just contact you and run their own signs like Hillary's yeah. a criminal. I mean, I, I'm done. I yeah, think it's can. time for everybody yeah. to attack. We we can we can we're doing we're doing the same thing that uh, that Van Wagner uh, was going to do for you, um, but we're we're just um, we're allowing you to use some of your resources you know in other areas and and if the people want to call um, call us direct or if they want to buy more shirts and 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 have you guys uh, do the uh, 
you know, do, do, do more planes. We can bring in literally 20 aircraft to each location. Wow. If, uh, if yeah, we I mean, I mean, I'm all about you not being centralized. And I'm just telling our listeners all over the country, a lot of them that are super wealthy, like, like Gary Haven. I guarantee I call Haven right now. I bet he'll put two aircraft in the, in the air, you know, for several days. I, but I'm just saying, I'm not going to call everybody, just Gary Haven, all other great patriots, Chuck Norris, you name it. Uh, you know, it's time. People just need to call you and call others. You know, you've proven sure. you'll do what you'll say. And, and yeah, I'd love to put 20 aircraft in the air. I just don't have the money to put more than maybe three or four a day in. Plus, the banners sure. cost money. But, uh, but I also don't want to screw your pilots over and the folks you contract with. But, I mean, I, almost if you want to haunt show it and organize it, sir, I, I just I want to hit them hard, especially the DNC. I think the RNC, we need a few aircraft every day. But I think the DNC, it should be literally, the, the you know, like the heavens open up with aircraft. That would be incredible, wouldn't it? Uh, you know, it, it, it would be. Um, we're we're big fans of the First Amendment, number one, and number and number two, Alex. Um, this needs to be done. What what she's done and and what's happened um, is criminal. It's criminal. She 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 needs to be held accountable for. Yeah, well, for people tell me, hey, yeah. Hillary might come after you. She already got me fired. They already sent. I mean, I've already dealt with these people, and I don't care. Folks have to get to the point of getting up off their ass and not being cowards. That's why I appreciate the fact that you're not a coward, sir. I appreciate you standing up for this country and helping. Not a us. problem. Not a problem. Not a problem. I'm I'm all in, Alex. We're with you. Absolutely, I get all in here. Uh, can you believe Obama and and all the hype in the media with the Black Lives Matter and now triggering this? I mean, these people are dastardly. Uh, you know, you know. First, first, we want to send our, our condolences to the um, to the departments, the families, the friends of the of the officers involved last night. Um, terrible. Um, and it, you know what's what's more terrible is is that Obama is not standing up and 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 just condoning it or uh, not or he's basically condoning it, yeah. shutting down right for not you know and um, it's like uh, you know he can stand up and stop this whole thing and and um, and he's not and he's not it's amazing. Wow, well, I know we're getting some of your biggest banners out there. We're, we're signing the contracts right now, sending the, the, the uh, money over. Thank you for rushing this through. And, uh, I mean, you're the expert of this. What do you think of our design? Do you think it's a pretty good design? Um, you, you know, the, I, made a, I made a slight change last night. I sent it over to, uh, to Buck, and, um, and I think he was getting that approved. We're just going to make things a little bit bigger and, and uh, readable from a little bit. Absolutely, further. sir. Whatever you want to change it, we'll do it. You're the expert, and we're all in. So, uh, I mean, I guess, uh, how many days we have budgeted right now? A couple of days, or what? What can we do? Um, we got we got one airplane right now. We got one airplane at least for uh, the four days in Cleveland, and we right. got that uh, scheduled for three days in Philadelphia. Expecting that Obama and or Biden will be in Philadelphia on the last day, which will um, which will close out the airspace for 30 miles around the. Uh, the, the convention. So the last day of the convention in, in Philly, I don't think we're going to be able to get in there and fly. And then and then as it gets closer, we'll see what other type of flight restrictions are going to want to throw up around us. Absolutely. But regardless, we'll be there. It'll be in the news. They censor it. And, uh, you know, next we'll fly it over D.C. I mean, every time they try to suppress us, we're going to stand up. If other folks want to get involved, and you know, maybe you want to fly it over D.C. or maybe you want to fly it, uh, you know, whenever, uh, you know, Hillary somewhere, uh, call flysigns.com and put the planes in the air. And, and this is yeah. a way to fight back. I mean, I've seen statistics from advertising, not radio, not and radio is great, not TV, not print. F signs in the air are the most effective advertising today, especially because of Internet and all the ads we're bombarded with. There's nothing like seeing that airplane up there with that sign. Is that an accurate statement? Um, for sure. For sure. It's an uncluttered space and it's... Um I mean, it's it's um, it's unique, and people actually stop and look and want to read the signs. So it's it's not something like you see, uh, you know, a hundred signs every ten miles on the side of the road. It's one one or two signs uh, right. all day long up up above them. Well, we're losing everything because people aren't all in to fight this this crime wave. But more folks are getting awake. Justin J, owner of FlySigns.com, one of the biggest companies in the country, independently run a great patriot. Anything else you'd like to add, sir? 
Uh, no, I appreciate you having me on, Alex. We're, we're honored to work with you. And um, anything we can do for you or the listeners, they just have to call in and, and uh, let us know. And All right. We'll, uh, we'll be able to do anything. Well, God bless you for standing up against these uh, these uh, censors. And we'll, and we'll talk to you again. Thank you, sir. You too, sir. You too, sir. Thanks for having me on. Thank Thanks. you. We're going to go to break and come back with your phone calls and the tragic events in Dallas, uh, the attempted by the White House, the media to start a civil war. That's what mainstream media is calling it now. Folks are figuring out, I'm not bragging, I've studied the enemy. This is not, I didn't come up with all this. That's what's so frustrating. The enemy admits their program. And so I would like to see our wealthy listeners, uh, a lot of you, I mean, just, this is, this is a battle. And I'm telling you, people think, oh, how's that going to save the world? It isn't. All, the action, the taking action will spur others. Maybe a website. Maybe uh, Hillary's a criminal. Uh, maybe um, Obama runs Black Lives Matter. I don't know what you put up on the, you sh folks should just do it. It's time to get aggressive. Or maybe you pay for a billboard. Or maybe you paint the side of your barn. Or you stick a bumper sticker on your card. Or, or whatever it is. Or you reach out to people of different races and colors and creeds and try to bring them into the liberty movement that unifies us around basic free will. But I mean, a lot of people go, man, Hillary's scary. You don't want to... <laughs> I love how folks always tell me Hillary's scary as if I don't know that. I'm not afraid of Hillary. I'm afraid of her winning. I'm afraid of her having her way with this country. I'm not somebody that's going to just cower down. And, 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 and it's not because I'm a tough guy, folks. It's because I have good instincts. I care about civilization. I know I'm a man. I'm here to try to make things better. That's all. Just like my forebears. They weren't perfect. But America had the biggest seat at the table with the elite and the most wealth and the most opportunity because we wouldn't roll over and we'd rather die on our feet than living on our knees. And it's time to commit. Let me tell you, folks, you're not alive till you commit. I know a lot of you have committed. But so many people like this idiot, these idiots up in Dallas that got mind controlled, they at least had commitment. They really believed they were involved in justice. But those of us that are awake, what are we going to do? Not go out and shoot innocent people. No, engage in information warfare. Engage in voting with your dollars. Speaking of that, we're running a special through Monday. I've expanded the Independence Day special to not just water filters and not just non-GMO seeds, but now optics, G-Shock watches, um, solar generators, survival gear, and more. 10% off is the lowest, upwards of 40% off on the storable food. Alexa Pure and Pro Pure water filters, all of it. Those are 20% off. A lot of it, 40% off. One of the biggest sales ever. I've just decided uh, people are ready to get ready. They're ready to get prepared. This is stuff that everybody needs. Look at all the destabilization going on. I hope we never need this stuff, but I'm telling you, it's something everybody's got to have. Your purchase supports him. Reports are coming in of more police being shot. We're pulling up the Fox 2 report out of Missouri right now as we speak. And again, they want to have an orchestrated civil war or rebellion against the corrupt government that just overthrows local government so the globalists can come in. Missouri cop shot during traffic stop after turning back the suspect comes day after Dallas police attack. And again, just like suicide by cop didn't used to exist and now it's become popular, or one crazy person jumps off the Empire State's building and suddenly five more try, as the media hypes this more and more, it'll just intensify. Authorities are investigating after a police officer was shot during a traffic stop Friday morning in St. Louis County. It happened after 11 a.m. near the 300 block. The officer who works for the Baldwin Police Department was transporting to a local hospital for treatment. His condition is unknown at the time. So this is just more of what you're going to see. As Obama says, we must reform the police after the shooting, saying that basically it's their fault. I cannot stress to you enough that this is our so-called government orchestrating this. And when I say this, it's so crazy, I can't believe it either. The UN to advise and control local police departments. And then on top of this, we have the military gearing up for civil unrest like it's never done. And digging in and getting storable foods and weapons. And people say, what are you saying, the government's our enemy? No, it's compartmentalized. They don't tell them. They just gear up for civil unrest. It's in the news. The elites are going into armored fortresses. They're moving to New Zealand in places. 
They're evacuating Europe. They're bringing five million jihadis into Europe. Look at how Obama tried to cover up Fort Hood and San Bernardino and the Pulse nightclub and all these other events. The cops getting shot a la Akbar, you know, Philadelphia, the, the Army, Navy, Marine Corps recruiting centers. I mean, the cases go on and on. And look, it's his people. It's the jihadis he brings in. And, and then they the order the FBI to not go after him. And then it's, it's the Black Lives Matter. It's, this is how Bill Ayers trained communist president operates. It's George Soros. It's just, it's, arrest them. Arrest Hillary. This is ridiculous. And let me tell you something, though. They're going to fail. They mean to bully the police and bully local governments and kill a bunch of them and have them roll over to the feds and roll over to the Justice Department and roll over to the UN and have them follow their orders. It's not working. If we wake up the local police and government, we can really take our communities back and have this globalist attack backfire and really save our country. That's why they want us to have a war with the police, a civil war, so that that never happens. Everything the COG is set up to do, the continuity of government system, is to take over local government. And this is meant to make it fail. The average cop does not want to shoot a black person or anybody else. It's a real good way to ruin your career. Are there lunatics? Absolutely there are. But are there? They even a blip on the radar screen? No, but the media creates the perception, just like the metal robot shark, people won't swim 35 years later in the ocean because of Jaws. I want to go to Terry in Utah. N Navy, preparations for civil unrest. I want to talk to Will. Talking about BLM and what they're doing. Uh, the Dallas shooting, Nelson wants to talk about. Dave wants to talk about Dallas shooting and more. Toll-free number to join us, 800-259-9231. But whatever you do, take advantage of the 20 to 40% off on the storable foods. That ends on Monday. And discounts of 20% off on nutraceuticals, 10% off on all of the nutraceuticals across the board. Free shipping's being offered, 10% uh, off on auto ship, a bunch more. And it funds the operation, InfoWarsStore.com. If you'd have told me 25 years ago when I first got put in the active that we'd be seeing open George Soros attempted to overthrow the U.S. with the collaborator media trying to start a race war, I'd have told you you were nuts. Peter Schiff's coming up uh, in a little while to break down the economy. Boy, that guy's been dead on. We're taking your phone calls right now on the situation. Let's go to Terry in Utah. Terry, what is your take on this? I mean, is Obama and George Soros not openly hyping this? Is Soros not funding it? I mean, if I ran around organizing some group that was running around saying kill police, I'd be arrested and I should. Uh, I mean, is George Soros not the author of this? And are they trying to escalate civil unrest? Yes, they are. Uh, I wanted to call and thank you for what you had talked about 15 years ago about preparations for this, this time that would come. We have done all the preparations that you suggested, and I thank you very much. We have stocked up on uh, everything that you mentioned, and I hope everybody else will listen and do the same thing. Well, I tell you, I mean, I've always been prepared because I know collapse can happen any time in a fiat system, but I always thought, oh, we're going to avert it. I'm losing sleep. People see me around here, man. I'm getting the firearms ready, the food, the whole nine yards, but the wells, the solar stuff. I mean, the solar panels just aren't hanging off the side of the house now. I've got them plugged in using them. And, uh, and it's because I don't have the money to run to New Zealand like all these people, and I'm not going to run either. But I'm telling you, I legitimately am got... I mean, my spirit is just like on fire right now. I just, I can feel, look, we ain't seen nothing yet. Obama or the globalists could set off a freaking nuke to blame it on patriots or something. I'm telling you, they're going for broke. It's just like the sword, to use the allegory of the analogy before, you know, the New York Times says I'm serious. You know, they've actually done that or, or liberal publications or whatever, you know, where you got the sword sting when goblins are nearby or whatever, it glows blue. I mean, my sword is just on fire glowing blue right now. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, I know hundreds of military that are doing exactly what you suggested 15 years ago. And they all thank you for the preparations and the warnings. It's all here. And I hope people understand that our lives are, are, are very important. And if we don't prepare, Infowars.com has given us so much that we've got for preparations. And I, I really thank you so much. Well, brother, we're all in this together. The more people awake, the more people we got a shot. So this is pure self-preservation. But thank you. We're in this together. 
every, their whole attack profile is about us being dependent on them. So all I know is I looked around, and I really wasn't that prepared. And so I'm just saying whatever people can do, get prepared. The most important thing is having friends you can count on. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. We, I sold everything I had to, to make sure that I was prepared for the future. Let me and ask I'm you this question. Let me ask you this question. Hopefully we can avert this by big enough awakening. Is there a chance in your gut that, 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 that they could bite off more than they can chew, jump the shark, and this whole thing backfires on them? I hope it does, but I, I have a feeling that it's, it's going to get worse. I just know it's crazy for Obama. We played the clip earlier to come out and say we need to reform the police and imply that somehow that's what made them get shot. I mean, that's crazy. Well, they made the police the way they are. They wanted them to be violent. They wanted them to cause uprest. Well, there are and some I crazy paramilitary police like the like the cops in Albuquerque shooting that homeless guy. And then they, you know, there's the squad car video, audio where he goes, I'm going to kill this guy for fun. Yeah, they shouldn't be hiring psychopaths. And then there are some really bad cops. It's true. But again, are police killing 980 people a year? Is that the number one issue in the country? No. I mean, yeah, they're aborting the three or four million kids a year. 10,000 plus people, d d you know, die every year falling in their shower. I mean, it's just... Most of those police shootings are justified. And so I'm not, uh, I shouldn't even have to be talking about it. I appreciate your call. It's just, I'm into statistics, folks. And flesh-eating bacteria are killing hundreds of thousands of people a year. I almost had it eat my leg off six years ago. I've had family die from it. That's an issue, okay? <laughs> We've got their profile. We know their attack plan. Folks, listen to us. We'll stop them. But you got to admit there's a world government. You got to admit it's out to destroy this country. You got to admit it wants to destroy prosperity. You got to admit it wants to sow racial division. You got to admit it wants to empower radical Islam to take over. I just do not have the rhetoric to describe how bad things are, how serious and how grave. I mean, I, I was in the bathroom during the break, brushing my teeth after I ate lunch. And I, I just looked in the mirror, and I was just like, oh, my God, it's worse than we thought it was. And like every other criminal system of the past, the elite can't help it. They just got to have full power. They're going for broke. And the other elite that aren't that corrupt are just intimidated and don't know what to do and are covering their butts. And that may have kept them in power before when things were more stable. You're going to be destroyed, establishment, with what you've turned loose. This, this is crazy town. And that's why so many billionaires are heading for the hills. We told you about that six, seven years ago. It's in the news every day now. We got Peter Schiff coming up. I'm going right back to your phone calls right now, but I need to go to a few of these calls. But look at this video that I shot last night. Putin issues desperate warning of World War III. He issued that three weeks ago, and we mentioned it then. It got no coverage in the West, so I did this video with new warnings. And the video went up last night at like 8 o'clock at night. It's only got 117,000 views. If I put out a video of a stupid cop or a bad cop beating some innocent person, it gets 8 million, 10 million views. And, 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 and by the way, then we would make thousands of dollars off that clip on YouTube. You know what I do now? I'm not covering up for the police. When, when there's some horrible video of the cops, we know everyone else has it. We're not posting it, and we're not making money off of it. And I'll tell you why. Because it's already saturated. It's already seen everywhere. It's already pushing into the plan to get us all killing each other. And creating racism. That's what multiculturalism, leftism does. All it does is hype differences and then make everybody think that everybody's screwing each other over. I mean, we do cover some of the bad police stuff. We do show it. But I don't even want to watch this stuff anymore. Because I understand the statistics and I know they're misrepresenting it. To totally everybody at each other's throats. Tell you what I do go watch, though. I do watch the new abortion videos. I do watch the new undercover videos. I don't want to look at those either. But, man, you know what? We air them here, even though it's offensive and people don't like it. I don't like it either. In fact, that's not an accurate statement. We don't play them. I don't really play a lot of them on my show anymore. That's all I used to do. And it's like a cheap trick or something, you know? And I'm just, I'm just not going to be part of it. I'm going to go to your phone calls. There's two clips I want to play first, and I'm going right to them. This is Obama again. He goes after the guns. I got a couple of these clips. 
you know, he brings up racial issues, all of it. And he's been doing this all week leading up to the shooting to get a major media push to change the subject off the foreign banks that have taken the country over and are screwing 99.9% .9 of us. I mean, I tell you, I got, I got poor white family, and I've been in poor black folks' houses. They're the same people. And the weird thing is I can't even hate dumb people anymore. I just feel sorry for them because I know how stupid they are. This guy that went and killed these cops, he thought he was a hero. He thought he was standing up for something because the media had literally brainwashed him. Dallas cops are saying, we don't know how you do something like this. You don't know how you do it when you got the president and Al Sharpton and, and Google saying, yeah, we need, to, we need to reform the police after this shooting. All that does is encourage it. It's the power of the media. Before they advertised cigarettes to women, less than 1% smoked cigarettes. As soon as they started pushing advertisements to get women to smoke cigarettes, it went to over half in two years. Read the advertising books. I have. Well, you advertise kill cops, that's going to happen. And that'll tell you the type of people we've got running this country. That's why I'm so angry. It's why I'm so aggressive these days. I need to not be like that with my family or my crew because I am just so serious as a man now. I'm just, I don't play games anymore. Because I'm telling you, I can feel it getting closer. I can see it. I know it intellectually, but man, let me tell you, my gut is just like, whoa, whoa. So I'm telling you, stuff's getting ready to happen that is going to make everything you've seen so far look like a joke. And you notice it's all ramping up. This thing hadn't even launched yet. And you're right, I'm trying to scare you to get you into motion because I'm trying to scare myself. I kick myself in the butt all the time going, what are you doing? Get your butt in gear. All right, I'm going to go to Will, Joe, and others. Let's play this clip of Obama. Here it is. When incidents like this occur, there's a big chunk of our fellow citizenry that feels uh, as if because of the color of their skin, they are not being treated the same. And that hurts. And that should trouble all of us. Does it hurt as much as 52% uh, of blacks being chopped up in the womb? Does it hurt as much as the government shipping the drugs into the community at the, at the, at the federal level? Does it, does it hurt as much as the black unemployment doubling or the great society with LBJ, you're, you know, the guy you say is great, saying, I'm going to have those N-words voting Democrat for the next 100 years. We're going to give them welfare and break up their families because the black communities, I'm not defending segregation, but what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, to quote Nishi. When my dad was a kid, the nicest areas of town that were big, there were rich areas that were white, but they were small. The nicest areas when they go into town were the black areas. Their own hotels, their own cleaners, their own restaurants, everybody wearing suits. All of it blown away. In decades of weaponized media, and it's happened to everybody right now. In the 1920s and 30s and 40s, look it up, black households had lower illegitimacy than white households. Now it's upwards of 90%. And that's the same plan for just it's it's a they beta tested it on the black Americans. And now it's being beta tested on everybody and we better wake up to it. Obama is a known predator. He's the black face on the new world order, as we said in the Obama deception. Let's go ahead and talk to Will. And then we're going to no, we're going to go to Joe first because Will's on another subject of BLM, but we'll get to him. Joe in North Carolina, thanks for calling. You're on the air. Yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm just a, uh, a son of a police officer and, you know, been in a police family all my life. And I just don't understand how people don't understand their importance as far as in, in the community. You know, I, somebody shoots somebody. As a mistake, I mean, we got what 350 million people in this country, and you have two shootings, and people are surprised like that is 
you know, not going to happen. Sir, you get one shark attack in California, and they'll tell you for the whole season, half the people don't get in the water, so they don't show up and buy snow combs or go to hotels. And, the, and, and I mean, beach communities have gone bankrupt over one shark attack, sir. It's the same phenomena. Exactly. And, and, and I mean, with, with the police officers, I, you know, I've watched what my, my brother does. I mean, he just had a kid himself, and, and you know, he's given up everything. He works all the time. All he does is help people. All, all they do for the majority of police officers is just help people. There's a few bad apples. There's uh, bad car salesmen. There's bad, there's bad What there is is bad governments in many cases over them. So there are issues. But the point is, it's a total distraction, a total diversion. Where do you think all this is going? Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, the hell, I, I would hope you would be focusing on, you know, what Putin is saying with talking about world war, diseases rampant throughout the world. I mean, you know, how about we focus on things that matter, not things that are you know, made up, you know, by this. Exactly. If my children are in school and they've got an illegal next to them, it's got TB and my kids get it. I'm going to be really pissed and I'm going to be pissed. Why wasn't the little illegal given medical care? I said, exactly. We got thousands of people dying a month from TB. D d diseases are exploding. And nothing's being done about it. Because our government is literally at the top trying to destroy the country. That isn't words, folks. That's what is happening. Thank you, Joe. Let's uh, talk to some other folks about this situation in Texas. Let's talk to uh, Dave in New York and Nelson, Will, Victor, and others. Dave, thanks for holding. Go ahead. Well, afternoon, Alex. Yeah, I, I want to tie the Mercedes Benz that was fleeing with the duffel bags in it back to uh, when your reporters or yourself were in Ferguson, I believe, and uh, one of you was talking about, uh, you know, these guys in their Mercedes or BMWs or whatever. Yeah, no, and Joe Biggs caught people with Molov cocktails, delivering them to the snot nosed white leaders that were Soros-funded, running around leading the whole deal, and the police were ordered to stand down and let them throw them all off cocktails. Somebody that complained because Soros owed them $5,000 or something. And yeah, well, this is how this works. See, this is why I wouldn't be a cop. I see somebody throwing a all off cocktail at innocent people, I'm going to kick their ass. I'm not going to follow orders to stand down and let somebody throw them all off cocktails at people. And that's a problem. I'll tell you, the cop's biggest problem is they follow orders that are dereliction of duty. And I don't, uh, and people say, well, you've never been a cop, you don't know. No, I know history and I know. If I see, I'm going to skip this break. I mean, what do you do if you see somebody about to commit a crime and assault someone? I don't care what my boss tells me. I'm going to defend them. That's not rocket science, is it, Dave? No, it's not. And I, you know, we'd all like to think we'd do the same thing I do with I would too. But what I wanted to get a point was uh, that if that's on film where the guy's complaining, any of that's on film about not being paid by Soros, uh, you want to get a little clip, start with that, then put point, point, bang, bang, and then put it, show them, you know, whether they got their Mercedes there and then the one where they're driving away. So, you know, these are Soros' uh, Lee Boyd Mal When we had Mal the local Mal Brigade slash devil worshiper slash communist, this is self-avowed, showing up, they were driving in like brand new $80,000 Jaguars. There's got to be a way for Drudge to pick up a little video, not a long, real long thing, but that we'll get from from that point up to where it just came out now. It, you know, snap, snap, snap. So the person that doesn't have a long attention span could see what you were describing earlier, you know, whether it's Molotov cocktails or the aforementioned, uh, you know, wanting the money. Sure, from Soros. people bitching Soros hadn't paid me this week. Uh, great point. I mean, you can go to the Federal Elections Commission, you can go read the charitable donations, you can see all the money he's engaged in. I, I just, I just ask myself, how is this guy walking around free? I, I just do not get it. Because he's such an arch criminal, he's got all the connections, he can get away with anything. We're going to go back to your calls after Schiff leaves us. We're going to get him on the line right now, Peter Schiff, to talk about what's happening in the economy and more. Get my Deutsche Bank uh, news stories here to break those down. Just briefly, we need your support more than ever. Everybody knows this is a critical time in history. Everybody that listens knows I'm all in. I'm hiring more camera people, more crew, but you, people see them here. You see us covering things live all over the country, all over the world, deploying people. This is not in, uh, inexpensive. I am totally committed. And so far, every time I up what we're doing and work even harder, more funds comes in to, 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 to supply it. Talk about Providence. I, I thank you for your prayers as well. We're also running now the biggest discounts ever. 
on optics, on non-GMO seeds, on uh, the high-quality storable foods, uh, on Survival Shield X2. It's about to sell out 20% off. That's with discounts like 10% off with auto ship and free shipping on orders $50 or more. You compound these specials. They are simply staggering. And the profit we do make makes this broadcast and what we do possible. It will end Monday. Some things like X2 has to end sooner because it's about to sell out. InfoWarsLife.com. But 10% off all the supplements, all the nutraceuticals at InfoWarsLife.com. Again, that's the subsection of InfoWarsStore.com. Hillary for prison shirts are retail. I normally sell them for, you know, like $10 or whatever. They're $19.95, so we make like, you know, 14 bucks a piece. So I can pay to put aircraft in the skies at the DNC and RNC saying Hillary for prison and Hillary is a criminal. And it's going to have a big effect. We already have companies backing out because they're scared of Hillary. Uh, but now we got companies taking action that are going to basically give us discounts, put even more aircraft in. Uh, it, 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 again, we are fighting as hard as we can. An example to others. I want to thank you all for your support. Uh, we have a lot of big specials. Independence Week now, not just day. Mega sales ending soon at InfoWarsStore.com. Our Independence Day mega specials have extended for a limited time. InfoWarsStore.com will be ending soon. 20% off Survival Shield X2. 20 to 40% off all sortable foods. 20% off Alexa Pure water filters and ProPure. 20% off all shortwave radios. That's solar, crank power. 20% off non-GMO survival heirloom seeds. All of this across the board. 10% off on top of that with auto ship. 10% off on the nutraceuticals on top of that. We're all in, folks. G-Shock watches, optics, yes, rifle scubs, all the best. We got a bunch of former special forces folks that are distributors for us that get us the very best deals on G-Shock watches, scopes, everything from Steiner to you name it. A lot of our products are lower than Amazon. So that's what it comes down to. Free market all the way. Infowarsstore.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Uh, now later in the hour, we'll go back to more of your calls. I'll get I'll talk to Peter Schiff, head of Euro Pacific Capital, billions under management. Uh, what I'll talk to him about what he thinks is going to happen with the whole Black Lives Matter. Clearly, Obama's trying to destabilize the country. Clearly, Google and the media are, are, are pushing this, saying it's the police's fault, basically. They need to reform. So a cop does something bad in another state, maybe. So let's go shoot, you know, 20 cops and kill five of them. I mean, this is really bizarre to see them going into high gear. How does this tie into things? A lot of elites are moving into bunkers. They're, they're buying armored fortresses. That's even in mainstream news. What is happening currently? We've seen the Brexit take place. Uh, we see Deutsche Bank to sell a billion of uh, debt to boost capital. We see the Saudis having to go borrow money. Uh, we see uh, the Deutsche Bank's uh, stock going way down. Some say that could trigger something really massive. Well, our, our guest predicted gold would start going back up. He predicted uh, that uh, we would uh, basically see much of what is now unfolded. And so he joins us uh, with an update uh, on that. But I mean, first off, Peter Schiff, the situation with the war on police. I mean, you and I are libertarians. We've been against a lot of police state stuff. We're against corrupt things the feds are doing. My God, your dad died as a political prisoner in, in federal prison this year. Uh, Erwin Schiff, a legend for his free speech. I mean, in prison for a book he wrote. Uh, so we're certainly not candy coating things. But what is Obama and, and Hillary endorsing Black Lives Matter, an admitted communist group, uh, all these Twitter lets people go on and say kill cops. If you or I did that, we'd be arrested. What's going on here? Well, you remember, she's got to always play to the Democratic base. She's got to make sure to check all the box of all the various constituencies. You know, they're all special uh, interests and they're all vying for their own uh, extra, uh, you know, protection, all these various interest groups. And, and so she's got to continue to play into that. And so she, you know, she, she can't condemn anything that might alienate any of these core constituents from these uh, special, specially protected groups. And so Obama just has to say, quote, U.S. police must reform. I mean, I mean, if people engage in terrorism and then you do what they say, doesn't that just encourage more terrorism? Well, I mean, obviously terrorism isn't going away. And I think a lot of the things that we do is kind of, you know, the equivalent of waving a flag at a bull. Uh, but, you know, it's all for these guys. It's more about politics. It's more about how to use this crisis to our advantage, you know, how to exploit it. It's not so much about the crisis itself and 
and, and, and the damage, but how can they utilize this to their own political advantage? And that's what's so you know horrible about politics. By the way, since you say that, here is uh, Al Sharpton admitting the whole police thing is about federalizing them. Here's that clip. Right, all over the country, which is why we're going to do this march from here to uh, Washington. We need the Justice Department to step in and take over policing in this country. In the 20th century, they had to fight states' rights and to get the right to vote. We're going to have to fight states' rights in terms of closing down police cases. Police must be held accountable. I don't think all police are bad. I don't even think most are bad. But those that are need to be held accountable. So there he is, federalize the police. What do you make of that? Well, we already have a federal police force, and I don't want any more of those federal police. I mean, uh, you know, that, that, that's a bigger problem. You know, Al Sharpton is always there. He always gets himself in the middle of any controversy and stokes the fire. Well, federal police killed your, killed your dad, I mean, I mean, on, on record pretty much, wouldn't give him medical care and stuff. And, and, and so, so, but you're not going to randomly go out and just shoot some cop, are you? <laughs> I like the way he says, well, you know, nah, I guess not all the police are bad. You know, yeah, just most of them. You know, I mean, the problem is the police state, not the police. The problem is centralized power uh, in Washington. And obviously the solution is not to centralize even more power uh, in Washington, but to, to try to break up the power that's already there. And, of course, a lot of the violence, a lot of the crimes have to do uh, with drugs and the war on drugs. And as libertarians, the correct approach there is for the government to basically surrender in this war. It cannot win. In fact, the war is escalating exactly because of what the government is doing. Right. We're going to fail like uh, we Mexico. We need to criminalize we these nonviolent uh, crimes and let people choose how they want to live their lives. We need to pull the ripcord. Uh, Europac.com, also Schiff Gold. Uh, Schiff, I'm not going to go over all your predictions that have come true. I think you're probably, this is, this is true, I'll only guess I'll say this, the most accurate long-term, even short-term, on the economy. We're going to break it in a few minutes, but what's, what's big on your screen right now? What's the next shoe to drop? What's the state of the economy? Well, you know, as you just mentioned earlier, gold prices continue to rise. We're about $1,360 an ounce. This is the highest we've been this year. Silver prices now, I've talked about silver quite a bit on your show over the years. We're now above $20 an ounce on silver. More importantly, the gold-silver ratio has turned decisively now in silver's favor. And typically, when silver prices are advancing on gold, it's indicative of a bull market, which benefits both metals. But, you know, on my own personal radar, what's new in the gold world is my gold company, Shift Gold, has now agreed to merge uh, with Gold Money in a joint venture between the two companies. And we just announced this today uh, that they're acquiring my company. We're going to be working together. To Congratulations. The of our, yeah, thank you, of our clients and, uh, and, and, and shareholders. And, yeah, I would encourage all of your listeners uh, to listen to the uh, video blog that we will be posting either later today or Monday on my website uh, at uh, uh, Shift Gold or also on my YouTube channel. Uh, to, uh, you know, have uh, Josh Crum and I are discussing the synergies and what we're hoping to achieve. Well, let's and talk about that. Let's talk about where about you see the economy going, where you see gold going, and more as we look into Peter Schiff's crystal ball straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones. I see in my crystal ball civil war if we don't avert it. And so for these decades, they denied the world government project. They denied the Euro tyranny. It was our job to tell the truth and be ridiculed. Like Nigel Farage said last week, when he spoke to the EU Parliament, he said, you used to laugh at me when I came in here and said we were going to expose you. You're not laughing now. And now there are movements in all 30 EU countries to leave. It's estimated most will, and the euro will probably fall. But regardless, we are headed into some very tumultuous times right now. Peter Schiff, Euro-Pacific Capital, uh, one of the most accurate uh, predictors so far I've seen. Long term, I'm not going to go over all of the things he's predicted accurately. Uh, but here we are now. We have other news up on InfoWars.com. Black Democrat Sheriff Obama Hillary fueling war on cops to exploit hysteria. Yes, the question is why? To distract from their agenda. Man arrested for allegedly shooting at police officer in Georgia. So we're seeing all sorts of copycat bizarre behavior uh, intensifying there. Uh, wow. But, but getting back to the economy, back to Deutsche Bank, back to the British exit... Uh, Peter Schiff, looking geopolitically at the economy, looking at what's happening here, looking at the fake growth rates that themselves are bad enough. What is the true state of the world economy right now? And then what else is big I, that you're is, looking at? It is extremely, extremely precarious. You know, the world sits atop a, a house of cards erected by central banks, uh, the chief architects being the bankers over here, uh, but certainly the central bankers in Europe and Japan, 
China. They're all part of the game. They're playing the same game. And unfortunately, it's not going to end well uh, for most people. In fact, we were talking a little bit before the break about gold and silver. What's significant about today's rise, in fact, silver prices are up better than 40 cents an ounce as I speak. Uh, but the knee-jerk reaction to today's stronger than expected non-farm payroll numbers was to sell gold and sell silver because in the past, when we got better than expected jobs news, even though the news is, of course, lousy if you look beneath the headlines, but any time the headline number was higher than expected, people would sell gold and silver because the idea is that, well, this means the Fed rate hike is more likely to come sooner than later. But I think more and more people now realize that it doesn't matter what the jobs numbers are, the Fed ain't hiking rates. In fact, I think the Fed has already started its easing cycle. I think it communicated that to anybody who could read between the lines. Uh, and it's not that hard to sure, do. Sure, what about the Europe talking about season. negative, negative? Oh, yeah, well, they're going to, look, they, they, they have nothing left. I think all they're going to do now is try to re change their rhetoric and try to talk about not raising rates. Then they'll talk about cutting rates. Then they'll eventually cut them, and then they'll take them negative. But I think also somewhere along the way, they're going to restart their QE campaign. I think QE4 is going to be bigger than QE1, 2, and 3 combined, and it's going to be all, even more destructive to the standard. I was about to say, won't it American be impossible to hide that? To be in gold and silver. Won't it be impossible to hide that level of inflation and that will translate to gold and silver? Yeah, I mean, look, most people know there's inflation. They don't believe the government numbers or they don't even know about the government numbers. All they know is the cost of living is going up. Food is more expensive. Uh, their utility bills are higher. Their rent is going Everything up. Everything is. Health insurance premiums are going up. But, Alex, we ain't seen nothing yet. When it comes to inflation, this is just the beginning. The price increases that Americans have been enduring are only going to get much, much worse. They're going to turn up the heat. The government's going to try to claim that all this is good for us that they saved us from a falling cost of living, and instead we should be happy that everything is more expensive, but nobody is going to welcome a higher cost of living. And your best defense against that, as I said, is to protect yourself, to get out of your dollars, to diversify internationally. I've been telling your listeners all year why they need to get into foreign stocks and out of the dollar. The returns have been absolutely incredible on our foreign stock portfolios. I mean, just enormous precious metals, gold-related stocks, I mean, and I, I think this is just the beginning of a big process, but people can't wait much longer, uh, given this, what, you know, what you've missed out on if you just haven't been involved uh, the last Well, sure. Let's months. talk about let's talk about timetables. Uh, you, know, you, you like to go out on limbs, but you like to be you know, uh, somewhat specific. Just around your own table, at, you know, talking to folks at your company or talking to your brother or talking to family that I work with you. What's the real prospectus in Peter Schiff's mind? I mean, there's no way this bubble goes on forever. It's already collapsing many areas. Uh, you've got all sorts of countries in turmoil with food riots, and Venezuela is basically almost a cannibalism. You've got all sorts of insanity taking place in the Middle East. Third worlds are collapsing. They're flooding the West. Western governments are opening the door to unskilled, diseased people. I mean, it, it just seems like a death wish from our leaders. So, so, so how bad is it, and what's the timetable? It, it, look, it, it's worse than you could imagine. You know, Brexit is just a small example of the problem that, you know, the global financial system can be so impacted by, by this decision that in a healthy economy with a healthy financial system, it really would be no big deal. But because we don't have a healthy financial system, because we have this bubble, that's why this is a problem. But look, more and more people, mainstreaming people, I'm hearing people talk who now realize that this is the ninth inning of this thing, this whole experiment with Keynesianism and fiat money. It is very, very late in the game. The time is running out, right? The clock has been ticking and ticking, and it's going to stop. And you, you can see that. I mean, it's it's the day of reckoning is getting Sure, closer Ron Paul's closer. big event, of course, you were his chief advisor running for president, uh, financial advisor. What is the big event for new listeners? I mean, this thing can go different ways. But again, in Peter Schiff's mind, how does this big event probably get triggered? No, it's, the, it's, it's a monetary collapse. When you see what happened to the pound sterling as a result of the Brexit vote, it dropped by 10%. Look, the real drop is not just going to be in the pound, but in all the world's fiat currencies, in particular the U.S. dollar, which is at the center of this whole uh, you know, Frankenstein's monster when it comes to uh, a monetary system, and it is going to implode. And this dollar crisis is going to make the financial crisis of 2008 look like a Sunday school picnic. What's going on at Deutsche Bank? the way it impacts people's standards of living. Sure. What's going on at Deutsche Bank? Well, look, I mean, that stock keeps sinking and sinking. You know, the stock is much lower than it was uh, at the depths of the 08 financial crisis with the failure of Lehman Brothers when people thought, you know, everything would collapse 
and this stock is trading substantially below where it was then. So even if you bought Deutsche Bank at the bottom of that decline, if you were dumb enough to hold it until today, you're way down. And the, the fact is, if these European banks are in so much trouble, the American banks can't be too much far behind. Uh, so this crisis is brewing. That's the reason the Fed can't raise rates. That's the reason they're going to cut rates and do QE, because they know how desperately they need to prop up these banks. Of course, we don't need it. We need these banks to fail. But the government needs to preserve this illusion. And so ha they have to keep the bubble inflating at all costs. You know, Peter, when you see, not just here, but in Europe, leftist presidents and leaders trying to sick mobs of people on the police, it, it's, it, it's like something out of uh, the road warrior. If the police start not responding, which is already happening in more than 10 major cities, uh, from L.A. to Chicago to Philadelphia to Minneapolis, I mean, just all over, because they're getting shot at, not getting supported, then everything collapses, looting begins. Why would the social engineers be wanting to do that? I mean, are they wanting to hasten a collapse? I thought the Democrats would want to stall a collapse out until a Trump presidency and blame it on him. Or, or, or am I reading well, too much into this? They just have leftist well, ideology. All, I think the Democrats are pretty sure that Hillary's got this in the bag. So I don't think they're, they're, they're planning on a Trump presidency. We'll see if the voters can surprise the pollsters just the way uh, they did in the UK in voting, in voting for the Brexit. But, you know, there is going to be, I think, rioting and looting, especially when we have a currency collapse, because I think then you're going to have shortages. I think the government is going to impose price controls, and I think there's going to be a problem for people to get goods and services that are in short supply and the government creating artificial shortages rather than allowing prices to find a true market level. But, you know, the politicians always come in and try to take advantage of a crisis and use it to expand their power and promise more government help is on the way from the crisis. But I think by then people might have figured out that it's all this government help that is the problem. It's government that's the crisis. And the real solution is to get rid of government and go back to the free market principles uh, that made America great in the first place. Let me ask you this. Internal pollsters with Trump, who are very accurate folks, you know, they're not putting out pipe dreams. They say he's dead heat in most areas and battleground states. He's four to five points, some areas seven points ahead. But Hillary just keeps putting out fake polls saying she's winning by 15 points. You're an astute guy. I know there's a lot of election fraud involved. That gives her a lot of points. A lot of folks are embarrassed to say they're for Trump. So that kind of gives him a leg up in some respects. But I got to say, I mean, if Trump really does get rejected, then it shows that America almost deserves what it gets because he's not perfect. I know you disagree with some of his economic policy. So do I like the low interest rates. But at a certain point, I mean, if America rejects Trump, they almost deserve what they get. Yeah. And, you know, if people don't know that Hillary is a crook based on what just happened with this FBI investigation, where basically, you know, they, they, they come clean about all the horrible things that she did, all the things, gross negligence, things that no uh, rational person would have assumed uh, you could do. She did all this stuff uh, and she lied repeatedly under oath to Congress. Yet despite all this, the FBI says, ah, you know, we don't think there's any evidence here because even though she did all this really bad stuff, we don't think she realized it was bad. And, you know, and the guy started talking about mens rea, which is your state of mind. And he said, you know, we don't punish people who don't realize they're doing something wrong. Yeah, what about my father? I mean, you know, my father believed 100 percent in what he was doing. He did not believe he was breaking any laws. He believed he was following the law and following the Constitution. But in his case, mens rea went out the window and they put him in jail as a political prisoner. Does any rational person believe that Hillary Clinton, a lawyer, a trained lawyer from a high powered law firm who was eight years, the, the first lady of the United States was a, a senator, a senator from New York. And then the secretary of state does not realize that what she did was wrong, that having a private server unsecure in her own basement and using her own personal cell what phone about the tarmac to communicate meeting? top secret information, you know, from foreign countries that she doesn't know that that's wrong. If she doesn't know that that's wrong, she is not only incompetent to be president, she, she shouldn't even be mayor of a small town, you know, but I think she knew exactly what she was doing because she knew she was involved in so much illegal stuff with her and her husband, so many bribes and kickbacks and all kinds of stuff.
that she wanted to hide her communications from the American public. And in so doing, she jeopardized the national security of the United States. Sick. She shouldn't be in the White House. She should be in the big house along with her husband. Absolutely. And, and just going back to your dad's case, we have a talk. We should talk more about that. Just the, the evil. I knew your dad well. Probably had dinner with him ten times. Had him on my show probably a hundred times. Uh, incredibly funny. Incredibly smart guy. And I remember in the Las Vegas Review Journal, it was like the judge said, "I will let you out and not give you a sentence, but do not sell this book anymore." Uh, it was like the federal mafia. And your dad said, "No, it's my first amendment right." And he spent. What was it like 13 years or something in federal prison wouldn't recant then they wouldn't treat him for well, cancer they, they, alex they never actually offered to let him out i mean i don't know where you get that they, they was the las vegas review I mean, journal before they sent him cancer yeah. they wouldn't let him out sorry go ahead yeah they, they never offered i mean you know my dad would never admit but my dad didn't even want to get out of jail uh you know on on, on compassionate release he wanted to get out of the merits but despite that i tried to get him out on compassionate release and there was no compassion because they wanted him in jail. Uh, they wanted to keep him in jail because they didn't want him out uh, because they wanted to make sure, an example. Obviously, of him. he's they your dad. Say, hey, you, you know more about the case. You if you defy uh, the American government. Sure. Obviously, Peter, you know more about the case. I just remember back at the time having folks on about it. I mean, it was in the Las Vegas Review Journal that the judge at an earlier hearing said, look, you keep publishing this thing. We're going to put you in prison forever. And then your dad kept doing it. And then I remember at one of the hearings, yeah, it, that, came, it came back up and he said, no, I'm going to keep doing it. But my point is, yeah, he was an incredible dad guy. Never back down. He stood firm for his rights and for his beliefs, and he paid the ultimate price uh, for that. Uh, but once he was in jail this last time, they never offered to let him out. I sure, mean, sure, we, exactly. We, we I'm just saying your dad was a hero. I, I'm just, I mean, I'm just bringing up the fact that they did say, quit publishing it, we'll, we'll leave you alone, and he wouldn't do it. He was put in federal prison for his book. That is incredible. Well, I think, well, that's part of it. I mean, obviously, that's not the crime that they charge him with. They trump up all these charges of you know, tax evasion and things like that. But the reason he was in jail is the same reason any political prisoner is in jail in any corrupt regime anywhere in the world. It's, you know, governments want to silence the opposition. They want to make an example of somebody to try to keep the people in line. You're absolutely right. But but, but getting off your dad's case, very, very sad one, but also very encouraging one, how honorable he was. Um, look at the IRS persecution, though. And Obama never got in trouble for that. And MSNBC says, oh, yeah. Right-wingers and libertarians deserve to be persecuted. I mean, have the Democrats not turned into a, like a brown shirt group of authoritarians? They, they don't get in trouble for anything. They, we are no longer a nation of laws. We're a nation of men. And if you're the right men, or in this case, a woman, then you're above the law. The law only applies to the little people. And then again, not even if you're, you know, if you're doing the right thing, they take the law away from you. They take the protections away from us that are afforded by the Constitution. So we lose our constitutional rights. And the government ignores all the constitutional restrictions that limited their power. Right now, they have unlimited power. And, of course, they're corrupted absolutely. Wow, Peter, uh, I always say this to guests, but I I've been asking some of the questions here. Looking at the world, what are some of the triggers for instead of just a slide into inflation and you know a, a depression they never announced but that we know are under, what are some of the triggers? I mean, could it be cities going under, states going under, Puerto Rico and these so-called deals, uh, the Brexit, uh, Deutsche Bank? I, I mean, there's so many triggers yeah, these out are, there. These are, all, these are all warning signs that there's too much debt. That is the commonality. You know, Puerto Rico is broke, but America is broke. Puerto Rico is just a small microcosm of the, the overall country that is even broker than Puerto Rico. And we've reached the, the tipping point. You know that when you have interest rates at zero, when you have all this quantitative easing, this shows you that we've reached uh, the end of the rope, right? We've gone from the sublime to the ridiculous, and how much more ridiculous can we get? I, I, I don't think much. There's, you know, I, I know people say, oh, Peter, years ago, you know, you were sounding the alarm. Yes, I know, I sounded the alarm early, but, you know, at least I knew enough to sound it. At least I knew enough to be alarmed. And the bottom line is, it's the people who protect themselves early that aren't going to be wiped out by this crisis. It's the people who don't know that it's coming. They're the ones that have the most to lose. Sure. They don't even know it yet. I mean, remember how much people were surprised by the 2008 financial crisis? Nobody in the mainstream saw that coming, even when we were on the eve of but it. But you predicted this it. This is a much bigger crisis, and they're going to be surprised even more, and they're not going to get bailed out next time. Well, that was my next question. As domesticated as people are, what do they do when there's finally a really serious collapse or massive correction? I, I mean, it, it looks to me like the bubble's much bigger than it was eight years ago. I mean, this is going to be explosive. Oh, oh of course it's much bigger. If they would have let it deflate eight years ago, we would have had more short-term pain 
but it would have been productive pain and we would have built a, a, a you know, viable recovery on a solid foundation. Instead, they blew more air into an even bigger bubble and now the pain is gonna be excruciating. You know, no problems have been solved. They've all been exacerbated. And yes, people need to take action now more than ever before to at least protect their wealth. That's all I can help you with. I can't help you, you know, do anything else, but at least I can help you preserve uh, the value of your savings and your investments, whether it's using gold as an investment, whether it's using it as a form of savings, using the gold money platform, or just investing internationally in countries that are not so screwed up. Looking at New Zealand, looking at Switzerland, looking at Singapore, looking at Norway or Hong Kong or other countries. No. All right, Peter Schiff, stay there. I got a few more questions uh, on the other side of this quick break, and then I'm going to go into some overdrive. Uh, with David Knight and take the phone calls with the folks that are holding and the latest on more police shootings uh, now taking place uh, around the country. I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com. By the way, we're going to have some live special reports this weekend, not just tape reports, because I, I think we're going to see more police shootings and things over the weekend. We're going to be here covering it at Infowars.com. I'm going to go ahead and host the next hour with David Knight and take your calls. There's so much news. I'm going to do the whole hour. We're going to go to all the callers that are holding. Peter Schiff's our guest. Just, just very briefly. I was already doing a special this week, 20 to 40% off on all the very best storable foods, already the lowest price we have, powered by my patriot at InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsSelect.com, takes you right to those incredible storable foods, the shortwave radios, the solar powder, solar power generators, the non-GMO heirloom seeds, the water filters, uh, the nutraceuticals, the supplements, it's all 20 to 40% off plus 10% off when you sign up for auto ship on things that are obviously reordered cyclical like supplements and coffee and things and free shipping on orders of $50 or more and your purchase and the profit we make off a of Hillary for prison shirt or off a of brain force or off a of secret 12 or off a of super male vitality or off a of X2 that's 20% off right now by the way but it's about to sell out that funds what we're doing here that is really historical the average CNN show has about 200,000 viewers now their top ones about half a million Fox top shows, three, four million. We have rated on uh, AM and FM affiliates over three million a day just on regular radio and TV. We're on a lot of cable systems now, TV stations, you name it. We're, we have on average millions of views a day just on our YouTube channels, not mentioning all the others. Facebook millions a day. I mean, it's sick. We're reaching 28 million people a week now, one way or another. Half of them in the U.S. A lot of ad agencies say, well, why do you, oh, it's terrible. Only half that audience is in the U.S. That's where you make your money. We're not about money. Money funds us to get the word out worldwide against globalism. We're a free market. We're not ashamed of money, but our goal is to defeat the new world order, the gun grabbers, everybody else. Obama's got a lot of nerve stirring all this stuff up and then stirring up Black Lives Matter, giving all these speeches, and then coming out and blaming the Second Amendment and saying police should reform as if cops in Dallas are to blame for a cop shooting a black guy in the back or whatever in Minnesota. I mean, that's crazy. Peter Schiff, in closing, um, I wish you and others were wrong, but economics don't lie. A day of reckoning is coming. It's already happening in most areas of the world. Outside, you know, the furthest this can push, how long can their hanky-panky and weird manipulations cover up the fact we're in a global depression? How long can this go on, Peter Schiff? Well, look, the fact that Donald Trump is, is the Republican nominee shows you that this is running out. The fact that Bernie Sanders... Uh, got so much support among Democrats shows you how disgusted uh, the rank and file, um, you know, people are. The fact that the British, despite all the powers that be from all around the world, telling them that all hell would break loose if they voted to leave, they did it anyway. Because I guess they figured it was already hell. So let's take a shot. So things that are happening now that you can see is evidence that the the, the wheels are coming off this bus. And you know how long it's going to take exactly. I'm not smart enough to know. I'm just smart enough to know that it's happening. And hopefully enough people are smart enough to agree with me and more importantly, to do something about it. Just don't watch it happen. Do something about it. Because if you don't do something about it now and then there's a collapse and all you can do is I wish I would have, could have, should have. I wish I would have, you know, listened to Peter Schiff or Alex Jones. Don't don't have those regrets. Take action now. Well, that's right. I mean, at least you won't have to be. It was all over the news. Do. It was all over the news at the time. How much did your investors make in 2008 when you predicted all that? It was huge. In what? 
I mean, 2008, your investors, remember it was in the news. They just, now, they 2008 just... was a tough year. You know, we made money in 2007 in the summer. That's what I meant. 2007, your predictions really were amazing. In 2007, and then... we did really well. 2008, though, it was a very bad year. 2009 was a fantastic year uh, because the dollar went down. See, when the dollar goes up, my strategy is to invest internationally. And so when the dollar goes up, and if you have investments around the world, then they're going to go down. And also sure, we sure. Have Peter, amazing. Thank you. Fourth hour right now. And I'll be back to Sunday, 4 to 6. Yeah, I'd have to be a really big idiot studying geopolitics for 25 years, really longer than that. But officially for 25 years, 21 years on air. I'd have to be a pretty big moron to see George Soros and others carry out this exact same operation in other countries and then not see it happen here. That's what's so frustrating. David Knight's going to be riding shotgun this entire hour. We're going to go to Nelson and... Uh, Victor and KHI and uh, Jim and Will and others here in just a moment. but And, and we'll flesh this out more later, David and I, but I don't even chomping at the bit watching all this unfold. It would be an incredible promo just for new viewers and listeners to take all the times you and I and others have talked about how they're gearing up a race war, civil unrest, the classic paradigm, and, and, and now see them doing it. But I tell you, Obama has got some big huevos, some big eggs to come right out and blame the Second Amendment and right out say, reform the police, and then a whack job isn't going to go shoot cops. I mean, that is so offensive to me logically when police departments are all these different jurisdictions, different states, individuals, and then you just say, because there's a bad cop here, a bad cop there, I'm going to go kill cops, and the president acts like it's okay. I mean, that, it's surreal. I mean, he, th this guy is... What's this guy trying to do, David Knight? Well, Alex, I think, uh, you know, the middle America is really kind of caught in the middle of a couple of pincers. One of them is the increasing militarization of the police. So we've talked about that a long time. You've done documentaries on it. That's coming out of Washington. They've changed the way the local police operate. And at the same time, we've had them institutionalize this kind of racism and hatred. And we see this now with Obama. It's not something that he created. This is something they've been working on for decades. And I think he's really kind of, he's not the ultimate uh, end of all this. He's kind of more like the penultimate puppet in all this. But this is something Next that's been going top, back. He's yeah. bringing in the final yeah. wave. He's like the false prophet of the race war. And if you look at everything else that we've been documenting with the social justice warriors and the white privilege narratives that they're pushing, that's coming from people like Bill Ayers. Bill Ayers wanted a revolution in this country, as the communists always do. So he sick stopped of that piece of crap. Yeah, he stopped blowing up buildings, and he did something that was far more dangerous. He got well, he involved would bomb in the police. educational he would bomb establishment. Police. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, he got it exactly going after the police. He got involved in the educational establishment, and so from that standpoint, you've got our children being radicalized, even white children. Seeing white privilege as a source of all evil and white people as being people that need to be killed. At the same time, you've got the police who are uh, told that they need to shoot first and, and uh, empty their gun if they start it. You know, they don't they don't they're not as reluctant as they should be or as they used to be in using force. And once they start to use force, they always make it lethal. And so we have these two things coming together. And those of us in the rest of America, we're kind of caught in the middle. We're both the targets of this hatred. And we are going to be the the ones who are going to exactly. Uh, we don't support the police problems and the police evils, but we don't support horrible George Soros civil war communist BS. That's right. And it's like the Hatfields and the McCoys. You know, nobody's going to care how this started at some point. It's just going to be shoot people based on their skin exactly. Color. People people yeah. say, well, why are you so against Islam now? I tried to stop the clash of civilizations. We knew the globalists were setting it up. They put the worst Muslims in charge. Now they're invading us with them. I feel sorry they're brainwashed zombies. I feel sorry their women are prisoners. But here's the deal. I'm not going to bow down to it. I'm not going to give over my rights. I'm not going to be enslaved. So at a certain point, the war gets so real, you just got to choose a side, David. That's right. And, and what we've seen, Alex, is this militarization of the police has gone hand in hand with the government's war on drugs, with their war on terror. And, of course, the uh, those are both focused towards our own internal population reality. And we've covered that for a long time as well. And so as you see the proliferation of SWAT teams as it becomes increasingly common, Alex, I can remember 
Looking at uh, Brazil, the the movie by Terry Gilliam, it was kind of a Monty Python take on saying what is a SWAT team, and yeah, when they come in and grab the guy. Exactly, in 1984, you know, the idea that you'd have these guys in black suits just without a knock blow through this house and bag this guy who's just sitting there. Yeah, coming through the ceiling, bag him and take him away. It's like wow, that's over the top. Now that's about eighty thousand times a year here in America. I used to have an intro for the TV show that was from Brazil where they cut the hole in the roof and come in and bag the guy and hand the lay the receipt. We should we should come up with that. Um, it's not fiction anymore. No, it's not fiction. We're going right to your phone calls with David Knight and Alan Jones straight ahead and extended live coverage. And I will be here this weekend with special live reports. You know, the saddest part about all this is this country was getting really good about not having racial tension, people getting along with each other, people coming together. And now they've got metrics and studies and polls out. It's the worst it's been since like the 60s. And I know the left's corrupt. I know the right wing's corrupt. I used to be the big guy exposing the right wing. But they really took an opportunity with Obama and they stuck the knife in. They twisted it. They poured salt in it. And they would have gotten an establishment Republican in. I'm sure they would have continued the agenda and maybe made it worse than Obama. But because Trump isn't playing along for whatever reason, they hate him and want to stop him. And they're creating this self-fulfilling prophecy that Trump's going to lose. I don't believe the polls. Uh, there's a Putin report I want to air part of that, that, that kind of got overshadowed by the tragic events in Dallas that we're going to play part of at the bottom of the hour if we take some calls in literally 60 seconds. There's another report with come and take it, the big attack on the Second Amendment. We're going to put that up on the site. But Putin's been coming out and, and, and saying they're, they're moving missiles in. We may have nuclear war. Your press is controlled. This is dangerous. He said that three weeks ago, no Western coverage. That shows the control. I mean, even if he was a bad guy. When Kim Jong-un threatens us, we hear about it because it's not a legitimate threat. But when Putin warns and says, please stop, it's not in our media. And I just don't have confidence in Samantha Powers and Hillary. And it's not just that they're women. It's just, it's weird. It's like... It's really sick when a guy's a warmonger, but they've killed some people. It's it, You're kind of like, well, but then when it's a woman in some dress with fancy diamonds on, it just smells like World War III. It just smells like the end of the world. It just, it just, it's obscene. You know, when you've got some big, bad UFC champion on TV saying, I'm the baddest guy in the world, like Brock Lesnar back when he was the top guy, it's like, man, I don't like that guy. That is just arrogant and pathetic. But at least he could back it up for a while. You look at all these weirdo, warmongering women on tape going, yeah, let's blow up the Russians. Yeah, screw the EU. Yeah, let's have a war. Ooh. And like weird weirdos on Fox going, let's kill people. And Hillary, I came, I saw he died. <laughs> I'm going to the calls. But David, I mean, is it you? Is it me? I mean, I mean, do you resonate with what I'm saying? Do you get creeped out by this? Absolutely, Alex. And you know... <laughs> One of the things that I was very concerned about, as I mentioned in the last uh, thing, is, is how we're losing our children through the educational system. We need to understand that it was the weather underground that created white privilege. And we talk about this all the time. I mean, that's the other side of the equation. I mean, one part of it is a uh, police department that is being goaded into using excessive force. And we've reported on this at, at, at various local and state levels. I mean, out of New Mexico, we had police trainers who, when they were given a federal agenda to teach in the police academy, said, I'm not teaching that. These are veterans who had taught for decades and said, that is a shoot first curriculum. I'm not going to teach that. And so they resigned rather than teach it. But on the other side, we've got them pushing this racial division and hatred. They don't care whether this is going to evolve into fascism where there's an overreaction on the side of law enforcement against uh, people who are protesting it, or if the protesters turn this into anarchy and we have a socialist uh, takeover. They don't really care which way this goes. They funded both sides in the past, as you pointed out, in World War II. They funded both the communist and the fascist. And in Soros is making money yes. on the euro and on the Brexit. Yes, yes, absolutely. I want to go to some phone calls. Great point, David Knight, riding shotgun with me in this hour. I'll be back this Sunday live, 4 to 6 p.m. for sure. But we're going to do live reports, special reports. Uh, tape reports as this develops because you notice everything's escalating. I have a sinking feeling we're going to see a lot more a lot faster. I mean, the, just the push by the media that the police are out to get you this week. This is the establishment media. This is the globalist that David just pointed out turned many of our police into killers. Turned them into these guys that instinctively shoot. So it, it's, it's just crazy. Great point, David. 
Uh, let's go to Nelson. Then we're going to go to everybody else who's patiently holding. Thank you for holding. Uh, Nelson, uh, next is Victor. Nelson in Ohio, you're on the air. Hey, Alex. Uh, I've been listening for some years, and we both know that false flags don't necessarily have to be totally fake, and we both know that they oh, are. Oh, this is a false flag. I mean, I mean, the media and the government hyped it, so they helped it happen. And then, but Sorry, go ahead. It's just a false flag well, doesn't mean it's completely fake. It means they created the climate and allowed this to happen. The, the media created this. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but, okay, well, really made me, I didn't think that really at first, because, you know, I'm all the way here in Ohio, I just, you know, hear what I hear. Well, what made me really think that is when they, first of all, the suspect was in the military, and supposedly, and then when they released this comment, they said something about, you will find, will find the IEDs. And I remember you always played that one clip, of uh, the one guy, I forget who it was, talking about, um, a lot of people coming out of the military learn yeah, how the to... Sheriff's departments all over and police departments say we've got to have armored vehicles because because every department will be attacked by veterans with IEDs. That does kind of fit the narrative, yes. Yeah, so I just thought... I haven't heard nobody say that, so I thought... No, well, they're preparing a war against state. veterans, and so they're getting the police ready for that, but it's not really working. But I don't think that itself is proof of a false flag in a classical sense, but that's a good question. Stay there, Nelson. I want you to be able to respond back. David Knight, what's your take on that? Uh, yeah, Alex, I, I really, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, whenever we look at something like this, though, we had the summer of chaos, if you remember, about a, a month ago. Uh, we were told that uh, D. Ray, uh, the organizer, one of the key organizers of Black Lives Matter, uh, his phone indeed was hacked. But then there were some documents that came out of that. We took a look at it at the time. We said, well, we, they don't look like they're authentic. It looks like there's some Photoshopping stuff going on here. It doesn't seem, it just didn't seem right. So we didn't report on that in detail. But, you know, whether or not that was real or not, that was one way to get the narrative out there. So it, was that a COINTEL pro operation or did they really discover them, uh, co uh, you know, uh, collaborating with Loretta Lynch to try to create a summer of chaos and shut down the political conventions? That's what's going to happen, quite frankly. So whether or not, I mean, you could, we, we talked about that. Well, we know you it's real it because yeah. the documents mesh with the open conditioning and programming and operations we see. People always think, oh, secret documents, you don't know. I don't need secret documents, even though we've gotten plenty of them. And boy, I get mm -hmm. rid of them quick. <laughs> uh, you can see it from human intelligence watching what's going on, not what's on the news. I know how to go out and look at things and tell. I mean, I can even walk up and go, okay, your Navy SEAL's undercover. And they go, how the hell do you know that, Jones? Or I go over, well, your Army, you're undercover. They all have a look. I've learned so much doing this 20-plus years that I can see that this is synthetic from a mile away, David. Oh, and also we had today, Alex, uh, it was reported on the Hill, uh, Loretta Lynch, Attorney General, encouraged members of Black Lives Matter to keep letting their voices be heard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. Don't stop with this. Don't let them intimidate you. And that's the key. This guy was a Black Lives Matter person. He wasn't an All Lives Matter. He wasn't a Blue Lives Matter. He wasn't White Lives Matter or All Lives Matter, really. He was simply Black Lives Matter. That's the division that causes you to hate the other. And people who are always talking about how, you know, we have to be concerned about racism and they always use the other or the uh, foreigner to try to create this racism. They're totally blind to it when it is turned to the white people. And as I was pointing out before, that has been a tactic from the Weather Underground. As a matter of fact, one of the things that the Weather Underground did in the early days uh, that Bill Ayer was, uh, was involved with, they said, we need to organize whites against their own oppression. See, that's the psycho mentality that they're grabbing our children with and brainwashing them with, organizing themselves against themselves. The Did I tell you, I mean, well, we were going to meet with a lady who has a, I've uh, met with her before, who has a popular uh, nutraceutical. And she couldn't come out and meet yesterday because she was too depressed over Black Lives Matter people being targeted because she was she was so depressed over blacks being attacked mm -hmm. or because because her son is part Indian, mm -hmm. which, uh, as if Indians are getting attacked by anybody except just going out and doing jobs making money. I mean the cliche is true. So we're sitting here looking at this, and I'm like, you're kidding? Oh yes, I'm too depressed. Literal mind control because she's yeah. watching mainstream TV convincing her. 
I mean, it's just a sick joke. These people are freaking nuts, man. They, they can paralyze uh, people like her out of fear that they're going to be targeted. They can make whites hate oh, themselves. Oh, yeah, she thinks they her can... five-year-old son's dead. She yeah. thinks it's over. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, that's the thing, is that instead, what they do is they make it about racism rather than the way that we train our police and the uh, rules of conduct that we demand from them. And what we use oh, our yeah, It's always for. a diversion. It's always yes. a diversion. Yes. The feds mandate instinctive shooting training. It gets innocent people killed. It also saves cops' lives. I mean, no kidding. You shoot half people to come in contact with. You're not going to get hit by a bad guy. Uh, and uh, it's just these people are too instinctively trained. And it's like, they're, I mean, I got two articles of them killing white people at traffic stops. Mm -hmm. There's not, and those cops should get in trouble, but it's. But they always double down. And what's happening is now, look at what's going on. Most of America is going to look at the innocent police who were shot yesterday. And they're not going to pay any attention to the people who were shot two days ago. They're off the, the, the mark. And so you get into this Hatfields and McCoy. You know, you have this two different uh, perspectives, and you're going to completely forget about what's going on the other side, and you're not going to address the root problem. It balkanizes everything. Exactly. We're Tell not us the root problem the root in a problem. moment. Look, 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 I'm going to skip this network break. Only one more. I'm a very bad person. Uh, that's why we do extra fourth hour, so we get more ads back in, so it all averages out, I guess, folks. That's how I rationalize it. I'm like needing to raise money and I skip breaks. It's, I just can't help it. Uh, let's talk to uh, who's up next here. Nelson, we're going to add anything else? Uh, no, just have a great weekend. Enjoy the weather. All right, let's go to Victor. Thank you, sir. Victor in Florida, you're on the air. Thank you. Thank you, Alex and David. Um, uh, really quickly, I just want to say uh, that I tried your product and they are amazing. Uh, the Vitamin Mineral Fusion, the Super Male Vitality. Um, I got the bone, uh, the bone former, uh, bone and joint formula for my mother. Everything works great. Thank you. I got the non-GMO seeds. I've uh, been growing everything. Well, let me just tell uh, you, you so have a commitment that about a third of our products are number one bestsellers by major companies that are that we've private labeled. The other stuff is game changer stuff we've developed with top scientists. But absolutely, I'm not going to sell a product that doesn't blow me away. And I mean, you take Super Mel Vitality, folks. I don't know anybody within two days doesn't notice a difference in the morning. And I, and I don't want to get into details here, but it's like I'm waking up in the morning like when I was 15 years old. That's all I'm going to leave. Super Mel Vitality is incredible. Go ahead, sir. Absolutely. And uh, basically uh, what I wanted to talk about is, um, you know, if anybody knows the time, the very short timeline of like the last uh, four days, it seems like when the FBI director came out and he did that uh, 15 minute thing where he seemed like they were going to, you know, uh, put a case against Hillary. And then at the very end, he didn't do that. That, that was the very first shooting on that day, I believe. Then the next day, there was another shooting. And now, yesterday, we have that, you know, horrible shooting as well. So it seems like now, I, I'm, I'm not, never been in the media, but now it seems like the top three main stories to lead with or nothing about the shooting, everything, the whole Hillary thing has been pushed to the back. So now we don't talk about this. Like, uh, it's just ridiculous. And sure, that's what Kit Daniels said to me this morning. He goes, hey, Alex, I think you should make the point that this gets Hillary off the news, which is killing him. And, and, and here's how it works. It comes out the FBI, and not the whole FBI, because in, in my life, I don't want to accuse innocent people. There's some good people at the FBI, obviously. And they try to stop San Bernardino and Fort Hood and and, 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 and and Orlando. And they get ordered to stand down and the FBI gets blamed. But high-level FBI and these special task forces find these mental patients, organize them online. They start the plots. That's the problem. They're not infiltrating a plot. That's fine. They're starting a plot. And courts have ruled this. And even the New York Times admits they've you know, created 99 out of 100 plots. They find the mental patients. They lead them. And sometimes they don't bust them. They let them do it. And so sometimes a false flag is... You've just got the people under your control. You kind of authorize them whenever your, quote, Black Lives Matter leader or whatever turns them loose. And then, you know, they go out and conveniently get killed. And so, yes, you're right. This is very convenient that all these police shootings started right after all this began to get that out of the news. I don't want to speculate. But they've done it before. They could be doing it again. David Knight? Yeah, Alex, I, this is something I was going to cover. It, it was on the Drudge Report yesterday talking about how there was a rough week for TV networks that it set a low water mark. And although Fox News Channel was the most popular cable channel, they also had their lowest ever average viewership for the week. Uh, and this is because it's 4th of July, and this is the way they report it from the AP. They say because of barbecues, fireworks, and other outdoor activities, 
The weeks around July 4th are often the least watched time of the year in television. That's why they picked the 4th of July Saturday to depose Hillary Clinton. That's right. And to take all this stuff out. And, and I talked about They argue that's the biggest news low of the year. Yeah. And, and we know that. And we were going to have a rebroadcast on Sunday. And that's why I said I want to come in because they're trying to bury this story and we need to do everything we can to expose that's it. That's right. I got, I got emails going, why are you making David Knight work on... Work on the fourth of uh, uh, it was July third, and I said, "Look, David wanted to come in." No, yeah, because they, I, you know, that's what they were doing. They were trying to bury this thing deliberately, and they did it very compact, very tightly. The first day that everybody comes back on a Tuesday, Comey holds his uh, press conference as if they had just finished. Uh, you know, they they learned something on Saturday. They had already written all that. Yeah, they tried to they hide all that over the July fourth weekend. Absolutely, and so yeah, I think it is very suspicious that we see all this stuff being compressed together right now uh and this has taken all of this further off of the uh, table for well, i'll tell you this whole black lives matter you know blacks are all being murdered everywhere yeah they're before they got out of their mother's wombs yeah it is true but nobody cares about that yeah it That's just right. the hype was just crescendo by yesterday i try to tune it out and i mean i again i couldn't have business meetings with people because they were in catatonic states literally in bed you know uh just fearing you know the dreaded and it wasn't black people it was like you know trendy whites that were just just like mental patients david i cannot believe 258 black people were killed in 2015 by cops well here's the deal Alex. i mean i mean thousands died falling in the shower i'm just i yeah. just don't get it but but you know you always use the analogy of sharks and jaws okay why was that so powerful it was so powerful because of the visceral images what we had with this shooting especially the shooting that the we see the, the guy lady, like a fish gulping for air it's horrible that's i can't right. watch it that's right and so i mean that is is what's freaking everybody out and the fact that's that another the question they're not, they're not the showing up close video of these cops fishing out yeah you know like gulping right. for air that's right and, and again i don't think they should probably but why are they just showing it like on the morning news this morning, I had TV on. People were like, turn that off. It's like people gulping for air, dying with blood coming out of them. And, yeah. and like one of my kids said, why is this on TV? Yeah. Well, and the other part of it was not only was he dying and gasping for air, but you could see the gun there and the fact that the, the cop is not calling for help. As we saw, you know, the, some of the other shootings that were happening around New York. Remember the couple that just walked into a wheel, uh, a uh, stairwell, and uh, they were shot by a rookie cop uh, who was surprised oh, by yeah. them. I mean, you it's know, like these thing. cops the that arrested our reporters, uh, the federal yeah. cops. Yeah. They didn't even know how to unload guns or take them out of their holsters. They were like literally worse than Barney Fife. That's right. And, and, and that situation in New York where the guy was shot in the stairwell, uh, they went out and the record showed that they were calling their police union to say, you know, what do I do about this? Rather than calling for an ambulance and they let the guy bleed out. So there is but a let's real expand. basis let's here expand. that we need to. I, yeah. I totally get why we could watch these shows all day and it looks like cops are the demons of the earth. That's right. With, with these, I get it. But statistically, it isn't a blip on the screen. Well, That's I've, why I'm saying it's a yeah. fraud yeah. because it's it's like. Well, uh, the other part of it, Alex, is, uh, I mean, decades ago, I had relatives who had uh, older shut-ins who had sat there and watched television. And they would get news reports, crime reports from all over the country because that's what the news wanted to talk about. And it made them feel like they were in a siege mentality, like they couldn't go outside. They were afraid to uh, go yeah, out. My grandmother, she's in a nursing home now, yeah. but she would literally be like, you know, close that door, look out. I'd be like, have you ever been robbed? No, but... You know, yeah, just the news was crime, murder, crime, murder, you know. That's right. That's right. And so it has that cumulative effect. And and also because it's very visceral, because sure. they amplify it by playing it over and over Victor, again. Victor, great points. Anything else? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, I just want to say it's kind of like really crazy because uh, they also now, by doing this, they start talking about gun control on CNN because I monitor, you know, I call, I call it. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, blame the Second it. Amendment. You know, now he can't have army training because he was army trained. It likes blame the army. It's it's you know, Alex. I started listen, watching this last night. One of the first reports I saw, somebody said, "Oh, it was an assault weapon." We know that it was an assault weapon. It's like <laughs> you don't have any. I mean, it was immediately after this started. They say it was an assault, assault. Well, it's weapon. using five percent of crimes, yeah. and uh, I'll give it to them. Yeah. They were using two percent of crimes ten years ago. So I get it. They are going up, but it's still. Five percent. Uh, great points, Victor. Let's go to Will in Florida. Will, thanks for holding you on the air with David Knight and Alex Jones. Hey, Alex, how you doing? Um, well, I just being proven right is it's not right. a fun thing, my friend. Yeah, I tell you what, I've been, I've been, I've been furious over the past few days. My whole thing is BLM is a terrorist organization, and it is funded by Soros, and it is pushed by our White House's agenda 
and the media that's being controlled by them. And by the way, and, new listeners, I'm going to let you start over. For new listeners, this guy's not. This is not rhetoric. Our White House and multinational banks are pushing this movement to overthrow the country. Go ahead. Oh yes, definitely. So what they're doing is they're creating a rift between the uneducated. And it's not a war against blacks. It's not a war against whites. It's not a war against police. It's a war against the uneducated because the uneducated don't do their research. They turn on Fox News. They see, oh, my God, another black person was killed. It was unjustified. Well, Alton Sterling, it was completely justified. Orlando Castile, absolutely not. What about Dylan Noble? He was a 19-year-old white kid who was killed last month. No one ever talks about him. So what the media is doing is exactly like what you were talking about. They're using these agendas, these BLM agendas, to try to cover up what's going on in our government. Instead of a mass protest last night about a criminal being killed, it should have been a mass protest about our government letting a criminal get away with killing people. That's right. You know, it's weird. Soros and them keep choosing things where it's open and shut that the guy, you know, attacks the cops and they kill him. Why don't they pick the cases where it is unjustified? It's weird. And, 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 there's, and there's dozens of them. I mean, this year alone, 1,146 deaths were caused by law enforcement. 306 of those were black. 581 were white. Now, most of those are justified. Maybe a few percent, you know, fall into the Philando Castile or the Dylan Noble. But it's the, the high-profile ones. It's the ones that come up at the right time so they can exploit it and they can use it to push their agenda well you sound like a smart guy are you are are, are you a police officer uh no but i did used to be in the military and i got out of the military because of the things i used to see and like you i've been a follower for a while but i don't get my information from you i get my information the same way you get your information i watch your show and i see you validate everything i see well agenda 21 people seem to forget about that you know we're talking about a long con you know, this isn't just something that's come up. This isn't something. That's Hold on, Will. Stay decade. there. I'm going to come back to you, play part of this Putin report I did, and then go back to other callers, Jim and Mark and Sherry and KH, KHI is up next, actually. Don't hang up, Will. I'm going to give you a few minutes and have David Knight respond back. But uh, that's what I'm saying. All of the fighting is real at some point. Everybody's got real issues and real beefs. But outside of that, the globalists admit they're manipulated. We're on the mark. That's the point. The empire's on Don't the Don't be manipulated. You know, 15, 16 years ago, I began to have Nigel Farage on almost on a monthly basis, back when nobody knew who UKIP was. And just this show alone was a large part of launching that operation, now devastating the globalists. Matt Drudge amplifying what we do and working with others is huge. And now there's hundreds of other organizations popping up that get the paradigm. Once the code key to unlock the globalist program is available to the public, you can decode their operations like that, and it's called the beginning of the end. Game over. The only way to win the game is not to play. When a white cop gets killed, we lose. When a black person on the street gets killed for no reason, we all lose. It's the same thing. It's ridiculous in this economy, the way the world works, to believe that somehow... Fighting with each other is a way to go forward. We should have a free society organized around the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, and free will. It's happened again. A cop was shot today in uh, outside St. Louis. And now authorities, highway gunmen motivated by police shootings, shot a police officer, another police officer in Tennessee. And uh, it's just intensifying. So I've never seen so many communist flags in my whole life. Up until the last two years, I've seen more on the streets. I'll be in like Baton Rouge. I'll be in New York. I'll be in L.A. I'll be in, uh, and I'll just see communists marching around. I'll be in Austin. I've, I've seen communists march five times in Austin and wasn't even looking for them. And, of course, it's all Black Lives Matter. So it's kicking off and i don't know how big this is going to get but i tell you i'm not turning my guns in because a bunch of communists run around shooting cops okay uh will what else you think is going to happen then we'll get david knight's take on this well alex i think uh i think it's going to get big and i think it's going to get a lot worse because what is really going on with the blm movement the police and everything else is a psyop against the uneducated and fear-mongering 
So you get the uneducated to fear the police, and then you get the police to fear for their lives. So then you, became, you, you create this rift between the two. So now the people who have orchestrated it have nothing to do with it except sit back and reap the benefits of what they And watch they the crime rates triple in more than 10 cities as blacks get killed in mass by drug dealers. Exactly. So what my theory is, Obama has talked a lot about a third term. Not necessarily. Oh, I, running, I was but, always you know, hearing this from insiders. He was going to cause civil unrest like five years ago, I heard. At the end of his second term, he'd do this. And boy, it's looking like it. Sorry. Yeah, and that's exactly what I think he's doing because I believe he's creating so much of a rift, so much chaos, that by November, we're going to be in so much turmoil, elections are going to be suspended. And then it's just free game. So the big thing that worries me is, you know, I, I'm, I'm a veteran. I run a veteran page. I actually posted a video yesterday afternoon talking about exactly what I'm telling you now. And then last night happened. I want to play it. What's the name of your you YouTube want. channel? What's the name of the video, brother? Uh, well, it's not on YouTube, but it's on my, uh, my Facebook page. That would be uh, facebook.com slash F U, the letter U, I'm covered. One word. Uh, do me a favor. Send us the link and, 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 and the friend invite or whatever it is to showtips at infowars.com because I want to play that video. We're looking for folks that predict things before they happen. We're looking for people that are accurate. We're looking for people that know what's going on, not just to actually work here, but to be auxiliary reporters uh, because uh, we're all in. I mean, I, I was working last night at 9 o'clock at night. I worked until 9 o'clock last night. The problem is I don't stay up past 9 now. I worked all day until 9, and then I just collapsed. And they were all calling me, trying to get me up at like 11 when this started. And I'm not complaining. I've never been more alive. I just work from like 6 to 9, and I just collapse. Uh, but uh, very, very interesting. Uh, Will, uh, send us that info. Say, uh, tell us your Facebook account again. Is your Facebook open to the public, or is it is it by an invite only? Um, it is a it's, a. it's a Facebook page. It's not my personal one. Um, it's a, it's a uh, veteran-run uh, Facebook page. Sure, sure. Started, so we're going to look it up right now and put it on TV and, and radio for listeners, but TV for viewers. Uh, it's uh, F-U, I'm covered? Yeah, the letter F, the letter U, I'm covered. Uh, let's pull that up on Facebook right now. I want to see that. Uh, thank you so much, uh, David Knight. Uh, Will, make some really good points. Yeah, Alex, you know, he is talking about Agenda 21, and one of the uh, articles that's uh, come out about the platform fight that's coming up at the Democrat convention, uh, you got someone who was Obama's former deputy assistant for climate change saying that uh, what Bernie Sanders wants to do is a burn-it-down march to the ideological sea on climate change. What they don't want to have happen is a visible push something happening too quickly hillary learned this when she tried to take over health care as first lady it didn't work she pushed too far too fast she didn't want to see this happen again instead they want to boil the frogs in the pot creeping approach. death yeah they want to do it very slowly and and you know alex when when biggs and and uh and zimmerman and ali were down at the border they charged them with criminal trespass what that's about is the federal government coming in and taking over the properties? We've seen Obama do as as Rob Jacobson. On both sides of the, the Red River, just people, right. people own homes for a hundred years. They say it's ours now. They just do it with a stroke of pen, and he's doing it under the misapplication of this monument law. But he's taking millions of acres. And remember, Yellowstone is very special. It's about two million acres, but he's got three, four million acre projects all over the country, from Maine to Florida, yeah, on we, the east coast, on the west coast. Grabs. When but they look, take that property, Alex, that's when they come after you for criminal trespass. That's what the Bundys were saying in Nevada. They said, look, sure. people have been able to uh, free to come and go and enjoy this land as the public has it. Now they're going to keep you to a little narrow path here, and if you get off that path, they're going to arrest you. That's what we saw with our reporters yesterday. That's what uh, Agenda 21 is going to look like, and that's why the lockdown on transportation is also a part of that. David, I want to come back and go to Jim in Indiana and uh, Charles and others that are patiently holding. Before I do that, though, I'm not going to air this whole thing, but Putin back on, got the article here out of RT, back uh, on the 17th of June, Three weeks ago, roughly, he came out and said, look, you got weapons on our border. You're gearing up. Your press won't report this. Your government lies to us about everything. We're in danger of World War III. And then we reported it, but it got almost no cover. Mm -hmm. No coverage. And to me, that's what's so scary is that regardless of what you think about Vladimir Putin, the world is just galloping towards war. And our government is run by criminals that put ISIS and Al-Qaeda in charge to attack Russian interests, 
really making us the bad guy, cut and dry for the first time in history. And so I want to play a few minutes of this report. The full report's up on Infowars.com. It's on YouTube. It should go viral. It's only got like 150,000 views since last night, which people think that sounds viral. No, no. Putin warning the world of World War III. That needs 50 million views, okay? And, and, and again, this is almost a month old. We just mentioned it yesterday because it didn't get any attention. This is why we're in so much trouble. Because just incredible things are happening. So we're going to play a few minutes of this, mainly with Putin's quotes with an English translation. Then we're going to come back and go back to the calls and get David's take on that. Uh, but this is why we say get ready. This is why we say, yeah, InfoWars is exploding. Because we've been shown to know what we're talking about. But it's too little too late unless we really explode. And my goal isn't to make a bunch of money and live in a bigger house. My God, I can't take care of the house I got. It's to try to save the country. I'm all in, folks, and, and to try to have a future and not have nuclear war and not have civil war. I mean, I really am surprised more people aren't just totally involved to try to stop this. I, I just, where is the survival instinct? I know it's there, but my God, this is crazy. So please support the broadcast. We have 20 to 40% off on all the horrible foods. That ends on Monday. And I added it to optics and shortwave radios and solar power systems and Nutraceuticals, X2 is about to sell out 20% off. You can get 10% off on top of even 40% specials with auto ship. And we got free shipping on orders of $50 or more. There's so many specials, I can't go over them all. Some of the biggest specials in our history, InfoWarsStore.com. Hillary for President shirts, 100% of that's going to fund the airplanes over the DNC and RNC saying, Hillary for President, we're going crazy right now. We're taking action. History is happening. Fully commit. My spirit is just all in now. I, I just know this is the time to go all guns. Everything we've got, maximum push as we go into this, folks. Ramming speed, InfoWarsStore.com. But let's hear from Vladimir Putin here. I cannot help asking those who have caused this situation. Do you realize now what you've done? Russian military exercise video. Speaking nearly a month ago, President Vladimir Putin at the International Economic Forum in St. Petersburg, Russia, warned the group of international journalists there repeatedly that Europe, the United States, and Russia were drifting towards full-scale war. We know year by year what's going to happen, and they know we know. It's only you that they tell these fables and you buy it and spread it to the citizens of your countries. Your people do not feel a sense of the impending danger. This is what worries me. How do you not understand that the world is being pulled in an irreversible direction? That is the problem. But they pretend like nothing's going on. Uh, I don't even know how to get through to you people anymore. And the big news is a month later, almost a month later, after we first reported on it, in mid-June, there has been almost no Western coverage of it at all. And that's exactly what Putin was getting at. Whether you love Putin or hate Putin, if the leader of Russia, with thousands of intercontinental ballistic missiles and cruise missiles, is telling the West, I don't know how to get through to you, your media is controlled, you're being manipulated, NATO is putting missiles on our borders. We're having to move missiles in. You've overthrown Ukraine. You're on an offensive. You're funding and protecting radical Islam. Do you know what you've done? Do you know what you've done? As he said at the UN, destabilizing the Middle East. Why are you doing this? Where are the sound minds across the political spectrum who should be stopping this? Russia has three overseas military bases. You have hundreds. You have your spies inside our country trying to overthrow it. You have your CIA people trying to get into our embassies. You are at war with us. And the average American, the average European, the average Brit is not aware of this. Obama, Another threat that President Obama mentioned was ISIS. Well, who on earth armed them? Who helped to arm the Syrians that were fighting against Assad? 
Who created the necessary political climate that facilitated the situation? Who pushed for the delivery of arms to the area? Do you really not understand as to who is fighting in Syria? But the issue of a major world leader saying that we're moving to the brink of war and it's not in our news, that's the big story. It shows how incredibly controlled things are. Deutsche Bank, one of the biggest banks in the world, is plunging right now, much bigger than Lehman Brothers. If it continues, it'll make 2008 look tame in comparison. Elites are building armored fortresses and redoubts all over the world, admitting they believe collapse is coming. Governments are digging in. Russia is digging in. Uh, our supposed government is collapsing our borders and bringing people in with diseases and ignoring the Supreme Court rulings. It seems an age of madness or megalomania is now upon us. We've seen great evil out of Russia. We've seen great evil out of Germany. We've seen incredible evil out of communist China. But America has had its problems as well. And now we see Europe and the United States and the whole Anglo-American establishment filled with hubris and arrogance, just violating domestic laws, persecuting the press, uh, leaking classified material and getting away with it. This is the stuff that collapses and major wars and calamities are made of. And most historians point out the parallels between the start of World War I and what we now see happening today. And the parallels with the start of World War II and the climate politically we see today. Even the Pentagon admits that we're probably witnessing one of the most unstable periods in human history right now. But Obama says, we've got the best economy ever and the world's the most stable it's ever been. As they do everything they can to push us into crisis. And it's not just the Democrats. They have their establishment Republican cohorts that are working with them. All right. I have never been more concerned about what's happening. That's right. I've never been more concerned. I'll tell you. I, we're I, able to raise the alarm. That you know, The full video is up on Infowars.com. I, I want to go to more calls after the break with you, David, and I want to do some special reports over the weekend, obviously, because just, again, at a gut level, I can feel the whole escalation of the next level has already happened. What's your comment on the rest of the situation, but also what the last caller was talking about? Well, Alex, as you pointed out uh, earlier in the program, we've seen how George Soros has engineered this in the Ukraine. He's the one he trying created... to overthrow Russia. The, I mean, God, yeah. don't you want to get rid of him? That's right. And so what we saw happening in the Ukraine, uh, they created this unrest, the pattern that uh, we're now seeing applied here in America. Isn't it interesting that we had Madison warn us that the uh, tools of defense abroad or whatever will be used domestically? And, of course, the tools of insurrection and unrest abroad will be used domestically as well. We're seeing that now. So they broke off the Ukraine from Russia. Then when the Crimea said they would like to secede from the Ukraine, they said, oh, no, that's not justified. Secession by the Ukraine is justified. And as they mass these troops on the border, and in the past, we, you know, they said to uh, Putin, well, they said, oh, it's it. just a drill. There's and a two-year proxy really war that? fighting Russian troops right now in eastern Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and the, it was interesting, you know, nobody talked about what happened uh, two years ago. This April, we had the close flyover of the uh, USS Donald Cook in the North Sea by Russian planes. Nobody talked about the fact that it was almost exactly two years after that same ship had another close call incident with a Russian uh, plane flying over them. And that ship was positioned uh, very close to where the Crimea was. OK, so they were there monitoring it as some kind of an intelligence ship. Uh, uh, but it's also uh, got some missile uh, defense on it. At the time, the Russians said we were able to uh, fly, uh, do passes for a half hour, and you were unable to get a lock on us because we got something to, sh uh, to shut it down. So there's back and forth. There's an in intimidation. But this is something that we've not seen for many decades now, this kind of intimidation and provocation that is being done. And it was begun by Victoria Nuland uh, the, of the Obama administration and by George Soros and his agencies, his non-governmental uh, uh, agencies that, that were by by the way, we don't want to just sit here and always bash George Soros. It's just it's always him. Yeah. It's like it never ends. It's always George Soros. Well, it's not us. I mean, <laughs> we've been told that uh, in the James Bond uh, uh, series, they, they picked uh, the bad guys. They, they named it after, you know, Quantum. They named it after George Soros, and they did that uh, deliberately. I mean, they know that he's been engineering things even he's at a national level. He's trying to bring down the U.K. forever. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. I, I, what has he got? I mean, <laughs> he can mess with the Russians, the Brits, everybody. He's, he's like running cop-killing organizations. I like... 
He's a James Bond villain. <laughs> Man, I don't know what he's got. I don't know what's going on with him. All I know is his media matters. is attacks us more than anybody. Yeah. And you oh, know what? Yeah. I'm proud that piece of filth. You yeah. know, he may have cheated law, but he won't cheat death. He won't cheat the laws of physics or God. That's right. George Soros will go to hell. We'll be back. All right, I'm going to try to get to all these callers. We only have a few minutes left. I appreciate everybody tuning in. We're going to have more special reports throughout the weekend. Just watch InfoWars.com or Facebook or Twitter, Real Alex Jones. I pray that this Black Lives Matter killing spree stops, but the president, Hillary, every, all the other usual suspects, they're saying we need to reform the police, which only encourages this. So uh, these are the people that have helped misform the police. Uh, let's talk to Jim in Indiana. Jim, thanks for holding. Go ahead. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, um, I was uh, watching Fox News last night, you know, like before I go to bed. And then all of a sudden, before the main headlines became mainstream overnight, they were zooming in on the three dead cops on Fox News Live. As they were saying, we shouldn't be trying to watch this. And I'm like, okay, fine. As other people on Fox News Live was debating statistics at the same time, I'm like, why are we at this point in this century? I mean, because a cop shoots somebody in Minnesota, you go shoot 20 cops and kill five of them. It's just, it's just warped craziness. And a lot of Black Lives Matter groups are saying, great job, kill more cops. And... I mean, I don't want to kill cops, number one, but if I just randomly put it on Twitter, go kill somebody, I should be arrested. And so it's freakazoid. I appreciate that point, Jim. Uh, real, real quick, because I want to hit a few more of these callers, but, but I mean, why do you think Black Lives Matter is so protected? I mean, I know they want this, this whole crisis to happen, but I don't see Obama and the Democrats coming out on top in this. Are they just in their own little social justice warrior bubble, David? Oh, I think they are, Alex. Uh, I, you know, But I, I don't really think that they... They want anything other than chaos. I mean, I read that quote to you earlier from Lynch saying, you know, we don't want the uh, Black Lives Matter movement to keep silent on this. And, and Barack Obama said the same thing. He said when people say Black Lives Matter doesn't mean blue lives don't matter. But right now the data shows black folks are more vulnerable to these kind of incidents. There's a particular burden being placed on that group of our fellow citizens. He is doubling down on this. And we know that the Black Lives Matter people on social media are get very angry if you say all lives matter or if you say blue Man, lives matter. It's crazy. It is about a racial line, yeah. To see him when he knows full well the problem of social injustice and economic injustice, and it's not about, like, cops killing people. That's so rare. It's a total red herring. It's a very sick program. The people running our country are bad news, folks. You see this type of warfare, this type of economic and cultural warfare, it's bad news. Mark in Arizona, you're on the air. Go ahead. Thanks for holding. Alex, David, uh, during the fall of, I think it was 2012, on the air you mentioned... Uh, something called critical race theory. And at the time, what is occurring now was just getting started. Uh, I would hope that you could elaborate on, for the audience, what critical race theory is. And you know, it rings a bell. Well, I'll, I'll have to go back and research it, but I apologize to our callers. We're out of time. David, 20-second closing comment. Well, Alex, tonight on the uh, Nightly News, we're going to go into detail on this. We're going to look at the background on it. We're going to look at the fact that this isn't just the militarized police, but this is the racialized institution we call government school. That's right. It's all there to create total division and just obsession on idiocy instead of living in peace together with free association. I, I just love everybody, man. I want prosperity. I want to go to the stars. Infowars.com is where resistance to dehumanization begins. See you back this Sunday, 2, 4 to 6 p.m. Special reports throughout the weekend. Great job to the crew. Great job to everybody else. Sorry for those dead officers and everybody else.